our finance committee first thing I want to say is this is the night for the schools on every level and they are going to be coming up to the podium and talking to us and this is the night we exchange information we will be not making any decisions tonight we will just be listening raising questions and then we'll make a mishmash of it at our next meeting which you are more than welcome to attend but for a lot of us this is new for us to look at so we're going to have a lot to digest secondly the other one Tom Leave that one alone. I know you like it, but you can't have it. <laughs> the buttons that say W and T. There you go. Yeah, okay. Secondly, everybody in here, please remember to put your phones on mute. We're all part of the phone world, and everywhere I go, they go ring, ring. So put them to sleep. Uh, thirdly, we do not take public comment. I will recognize people that are speaking. The Finance Committee is more than welcome to ask questions, but the public does not weigh in unless I specifically ask you to. Going forward, I would like the Finance Committee, starting with Keith, to say off who they are, please. Keith Irv. Dennis Aubin. James Drury. Lori Davis. Tom Clough. Tammy Hagman. Megan Thullen. Gary Evans. Matt Whitlock. Chris Haig. Neil Kirk. Okay, so we definitely have quorum. Matt, would you take the min take over the minutes, please? We need to approve the minutes from our last meeting on Wednesday, 18th of December. There were, well, I'll make a motion that we approve them uh, with two amendments. One was a, uh, a spelling correction, kindergarten was misspelled, and then uh, there was also a factual error that the where school district's public hearing is actually scheduled for the 15th, not the 8th. And then, um, can I say, uh, well, I've just uh, said, uh, Neil um, wanted uh, an addition made to uh, the minutes uh, regarding Eileen's um, uh, new policy of um, uh, requesting that all finance, I mean, all uh, department heads and uh, administrators um, share information with her when any uh, finance committee member has requested information from them. I uh, would like that reflected in the minutes, and so I guess I would uh, move that, and we can have a vote on whether to include that. Any adjustments to the minutes besides those? Any discussion? Motion to approve? Approve so with that amendment, with yes. that addition? Yep. Say aye. 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 Okay. Nays? Recusals? Good to go. Okay, so I'm not sure how the schools want to do this, which one's coming up first, and who's going to do the presenting so please come up and introduce yourselves and anything we're going to get the schools no offense done first and anything else we need to handle we will handle afterwards okay hello I'm Jackie Coe and I am superintendent of schools for SAU 24 seven days in uh, so uh, we say congratulations I, I think so ask say congratulations at the end of tonight okay okay <laughs> Um, so I am sharing with you tonight uh, the budgets that we presented to the board back in December. Um, next week is when we'll be presenting again in the public hearings. Um, do you want, is it okay if I start with the John Stark budget? Whichever budget excites you, we're happy to go with. Okay, we'll go with John Stark then. Probably go with the easiest yeah, first. Well, that is my plan. Uh, so the proposed budget for John Stark is up eight one thing yes as long as Zach is on deck to be called on if we need him it does thank you Zach go ahead thank um, you um so the you'll see Excuse the me, madam chairman is there an extra copy of the stark budget I only have where um there's this I don't know whose it is actually I only have where as well we'll have to share do you have enough copies down there? I'm still missing one. Okay, you can have mine. I can steal perk over on Tom. So he's very good about sharing with me. Wait, no, this is the where. Because I'm not. Right? It's not the one I need. <laughs> no. I, I'm always peering on your shoulder for other well, things. Need Stark. Uh, over here. I need Stark. Do you need Stark instead? Stark is the one I was missing. Okay, because you need it for your records. Okay. So. I'll be looking like this and like that, so right. we're good to go. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so the proposed budget you'll see is almost nineteen thousand dollars up, um, which is point one four percent. 
uh, and Kathleen noted that uh, $26,000 of that is actually food service, which is an in out. Um, so if we took that out, which we can't do, but if we took that out, we'd actually be below um, slightly. Uh, and the default is uh, $87,000 less than our current budget at Stark, so a negative 0.64%. How we got there? We cut the equivalent of three teachers. Uh, these cuts, along with some significant health care savings due to census changes and a guaranteed maximum rate of negative 2.7%, helped to offset some increases that we did have. Some of those increases included special education costs, um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, and out of district tuition. Hmm. And we're also. Um, working to replace some end-of-life technology within the building. So that is the Stark budget. Uh, and then I could speak to some of the warrant articles we've been discussing. Before you do that, okay. I'd like to know what are we looking at as far as enrollment? Is it growing? Is it dropping? Is it staying the same? It's a staying approximately the same. I've got my population here. Yes, we're having a problem finding the default. Different for now. Summary. So that's just the okay, so what we've got. Is it, is it buried here? Is it uh, Jackie, when What's you're talking about the default, where is it? You should have both. Um, up at the top, it should say. Uh, J S R H S default object summary. Opposed. 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 I don't have it. I seem to say I'll say. Can we opposed. get a copy yes, of what you've can. got, please? What page number is it? Um, it seems like a page. It's its own thing. It is its own oh, it's, it's piece, no and it seems no like no page number. Yeah, Do we, you want? We, we put the default budget as a separate object and function summary. Can you handle this, Keith, while I go make copies? As its own you uh, have function it. and object no. summary. Do you have it? And then we compare the two to each other. I can go make copies. Thank you. I don't, I don't, I don't know what happened. You have to be up here because nowadays everybody <laughs> wants to know what you look like. <laughs> or you're really not real and we could be making you up. Lorraine Taconi Moore. Um, uh, former superintendent and current district administrator for SAU 24 until June 30. Um, I'm not really sure what happened because I had given four copies in binders to, to Keith at the where, where at where and then I gave four copies to Christine at mm -hmm. Stark and then we dropped off an additional 10 copies of both where and Stark at the middle school so I apologize if there wasn't enough but we thought 14 copies would have been <laughs> sufficient so I don't know what happened to them all we're not angry if we no, just no, no, could I'm get just, a copy I'm just saying of it. that I, I you know I, I, don't I picked these up today this morning so but there should have been four and envelopes Okay, all they gave me was two. I said, is, okay. is this it? And they said, yep. Because there were two for wear and two for star. Okay, so that's where the problem is. Okay, so yeah. if we could just get a copy of whatever we're trying to talk about, because we have okay. no clue. Well, while we're waiting for the copies, should I speak to the warrant? Sure. Did everybody have a Hang on a second, please. Have any questions about the budget? Looking for the default. Okay. Oh, the default one. We're going to be getting copies, but in the meantime, let's go ahead. What did you want to ask about, Neil? I wanted to ask about the budget. She's about to leave the budget and proceed. Okay, let's. Warrant. Any questions on the budget from what we see of it, please bring them up, Neil. Uh, you mentioned that you're eliminating. Well, that's really good. Do they have things in them? Paper. School dividers. Show us what she just talked about. Um, I was notified of the first the four right notebooks. I picked up the first four at, at um, the middle school and I notified the other th three people that attend the John Stark meetings. 
that the copies would be here. I don't know where the ones, the stack that just came, nobody was notified, I don't think. The middle school people maybe haven't gotten the notice out yet. That could be a cross between me and the SAU. I mean, okay. I, I got a new phone, so terrible things happen. Everybody knows I'm so technical. Well, they notified by perfect. email, and I went down the next day and picked up yes. the first four. Yeah. And I picked this up this morning, and all I got were two pages. And again, we're not picking on anybody. We all know it's a creative time of the year. <laughs> the crazy. object of the exercise, do you want to hand this down for the somebody to be looking at the default? And they are making some Right, but in the meantime, at least we can divide the group up into thirds and sort of look like we know what we're doing. So back to your original direction, Neil. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I wonder if you could explain why you're eliminating three teaching positions and which ones they are. Um, we are is within the world language. We actually we had some trouble hiring. Uh, within the Latin program and uh, we were able to redirect students to other to Spanish and to French um, and so that was we had trouble hiring it is is very difficult uh, to find a Latin teacher and uh, so eliminate that position and then we're able to there is part of a position with the, there was a part-time position in French uh, and we actually, that person went to the middle school, Ware Middle School, but, uh, and it is teaching there. And then we eliminated a little bit of Spanish. So it was primarily within the world languages, and we were able to make that work um, enrollment-wise. And then the other thing was a, we had a retirement in special ed, and we did not replace that position. Follow up, Madam Chairman? Go ahead. So in effect, we're dropping the Latin program. We did drop the Latin program, yes, unfortunately. Thank you. Any other questions? Chris? Um, yeah, just definitions. And, and may I say, I, I went through this and I found it to be a very sensible budget. Uh, I don't know what other instructional programs as a category means. I just wanted a definition and also a definition for support services instructional staff. That's on the uh, function summary. Can you give us a page number, please? Um, page one. First page. I, I just didn't know what those meant. Sorry, Line item 2200. Is it the defect that you proposed? You look for it. You're good at this. You're welcome. Yeah, and I just needed to know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Page one, it says function. I don't see Page one of the dysfunctions. Oh, oh, at the top. Yeah. Oh, budget by function. Um, are we talking uh, the, the the technical one? school, and we're talking we um, co okay co curricular. And the next one down, support services. It's guidance. Okay. We did. Yes. Zach, can you speak up louder and grace us with your presence, please? <laughs> sure. Do you want me to come to the podium? Oh, please. Uh, People think we might make you invisible, and that's not a good <laughs> hey plan for us. So I'm Zach Lawson. I'm from Henniker. I'm the, the chair of the Stark Board. Um, so I've, I'm looking at the, the function summary here. Um, the You're talking about the 1400 series and the 2100 series right on the front page there, right? Yeah. And you're you're likely asking why there's an increase of 35,000 in well, the 1400 series? Well, sometimes you have to increase things. If I knew what it was, it would Agreed. make sense, yeah. you know? Yep. So. Um, generally, and uh, you guys can confirm this, we've, ha we've had some transfers in the budget that oftentimes will happen where we'll mm -hmm. see an increase in a line where um, you, you would think like, okay, well, we're hiring somebody here or adding something here. That's not necessarily what's happening. We're just reclassifying the expenses from an another line within the budget into this particular line. If I've, I've, is that correct in this particular case, Kathleen? Well, I don't have the thing in front of me, but yeah. I believe it, it's uh, a, a change in speech and in guidance. Okay. 
because the 2100s are your speech, your guidance, your nursing, okay. and health care, and, and those kinds of items. Okay. So you're saying that, that we are we are moving it from one category to another, the speech pathology, or are we actually adding that in this particular case? There was an addition somewhere. Okay. All right. Yeah. Within once she gets. Yeah. MOT, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the 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 typically the categories Thank you, that they cover are the um, as Kathleen is saying, uh, speech and and student services around speech pathology and uh, and occupational therapy. Um, but then in the uh, in the other instructional programs, that is our co-curriculars. What we're actually paying for the co-curricular activities for students to participate in. And what is support services general administration? Is that just oversight of those services? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is that part of the SAU role, or is it in-house? Within the building. It is. Yes. Thank you. The, the SAU is done as a transfer. It's a single line on yep. this budget. We pay, we, John Stark pays the SAU for the administrative services that they provide to this district. Okay. Just like everybody else does. There is a separate budget, which is associated with the, with the SAU as right. a whole, that makes up those distributions yeah. from each of the districts. Okay. And so that line for what you receive in services would be in this budget? Uh, it, it is. is. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. I don't. I don't remember the the object or the function offhand. Okay. Twenty three twenty. There you go. Twenty three twenty seven. Twenty three. It's in the twenty three twenties. Twenty three twenties. Thank you. You're More questions. Yes. No. I see frowns. I see wrinkles. Go ahead, Neil. This is for Zach. Um, Zach, over the years, the, the Starts Board has been very aware of the declining or stabilized student population and has done an, an exceptional job, in my opinion, of bringing the school's budget down to meet the reality of uh, a smaller student body. Um, there are obviously limits to how slim the school can be and still function well. Um, I hope that you will tell us if that point <coughs> comes. Um, my question is, does this budget exceed that point? Um, so you, you asked the question of me. <coughs> I, this is something that's a, a fairly common refrain or it's a, it's a common uh, question that we wind up having for the administration when we review these processes. Um, or when we go through the budget making process, um, as you, you are alluding to, you know, putting together a, a, a personnel budget for a high school um, situation is um, many orders of magnitude more difficult than, say, in a, in a, in a K through eight sort of environment where you have so many units of a particular grade, okay? Um, but yes, we, we rely very heavily on Principal Dempsey uh, and Lorraine and Jackie to sort of work with us to understand what trends in enrollment have been with the students to know whether or not this is something that you know we can continue to carry on or not and that's how we wind up getting to the uh, I'll, I'll classify it as like a right sizing of the of the budget and the personnel to meet the student sort of uh, population and demands and, and I'll let you guys speak a little bit more specifically to the Latin piece I, I'm sort of teeing this up to, to talk a little bit about Latin while overall school enrollment has been declining, uh, enrollment in some of the world language programs has also been declining. So, you know, you can look at <clears throat> these little subsets of, of, of um, programs within the school um, that we go through. I think we just did it at our last meeting or the meeting before where we approve mm -hmm. the, the program of studies. And that is what is the information to the administration to decide, you know, where do we need personnel, where don't we need personnel, how are we going to reconfigure or retool things. So. Um, when we look at when we go through that process, that's the point at which we would hear from the administration. Okay, we we've you know dived below that that level where we're meeting student needs. Um, you know how are we going to make this happen? And if if that were the case, Neil, we would be talking about needing to add a bunch of units of a particular uh, program of study, or we would see a lot of increased openings in that, and that's how it would manifest itself in the budget. Here. So no, we're not at that point yet. Yes, we would tell you if we were at that point, we'd be talking about it differently than we are now. Follow up. Um, would it be possible to do with Latin what you've done in a number of other areas, and that is instead of eliminating it, offer it um, less frequently or in a different way? I know that you've done that with some of the other programs by offering courses not annually but every other year, or not every semester but every other semester. 
yes, I think the, and you guys can jump in if I've got this wrong, but I think generally that becomes a problem in the, in the hiring process. It's very, very, very difficult to hire, hire a fractional uh, teacher for a particular program like that if we don't offer it all the time. Uh, so the trick that you try to, 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 to get done is um, having a, a world language teacher who can teach multiple subjects or something along those lines. I'm not positive if that's how our configuration is right now, but that seems the, like the most likely way to solve it in the manner you're speaking about, Neil. Um, am I sort of in the ballpark there? We did have somebody, um, and, and I think we're in the same situation that other high schools are in, in finding um, good Latin teachers, and uh, unfortunately he found, he was a .8 position, and he found a full-time position, um, and then we did not receive an application. We simply could not hire someone. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Zach, do you want to add anything to anything yet? Um, the one thing that I'll add that is is and it's going to be an impact on on both the default and the um, uh, the proposed budget um, has to do with the um, uh, cost of health insurance and, and benefits. So, um, Jackie uh, stated it correctly. It's really two things that are driving that number lower. Um, the first being uh, we we'll call them census changes. That's a that's a terminology that we use to say that you know the the insurance options that the staff wind up choosing has it will change going into next year to the extent that we know about it. Um, the other point that she made, which is which is valid and important, is that we have a guaranteed maximum rate increase that is actually a decrease this year of I forget what it is two point something percent seven, seven. negative two point seven percent. So it dropped by two point seven. Well, it it will drop at least by two point seven. That's the point that I wanted to make. Which is typically when we talk GMR, we're saying it won't increase more than say five, six, seven percent. In this case, it won't increase by more than negative 3.7%, which means we could see even lower reductions. It could be like a 4 or 5 or 6% reduction in health insurance costs when, it, when it comes around. Because I know your year is different from it is. everything else. When do we expect to get a handle on that number? Is that not until summer? It'll be before the summer. Right. Uh, it'll be before July 1. Um, okay. But it will be after the point at which we vote, which is why we get the GMR from, from okay. them. And so what happened last year is we had a 9% GMR. We <coughs> were guaranteed that health insurance rates were not going to increase beyond 9%. It actually came in at 24 So we realized that savings, and now now we're in an ideal position that it's negative 2.7 at least. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Any other questions for this part of the discussion? <coughs> Remember, if we do, we can always contact them and beg them to come back for a second performance. We are still going to talk more in, I think, as well, right? Okay. Yes. Right, perfect. yes. Right. Perfect. And actually, yeah. the expendable trust one yeah. as far as... Um, <laughs> Uh, so do we have two warrants that uh, we are considering, one being setting up a new expendable trust for infrastructure and facilities. Uh, we have a long list uh, within our CIP that we are trying to tackle to take care of the building. It includes uh, we need energy recovery units up on the roof. Um, we need roof replacement and roof work, track resurfacing. And, and so there is a, a long list that we're trying to save up to tackle. And so we're proposing uh, putting $200,000 of surplus money at the end of the year into a new infrastructure and facilities expendable trust as a warrant. expendable trust, is it like the trust that the town has? that they have to get voter permission, they have to vote on it yeah. every year, that no, the expendable. Board of Selectmen yes. can't, they or do. do you have the ability to just expend out of it without the voters clearing that? So there's there's a nuance to the way you're asking that. We, we have to get the voter approval to fund it in the first place, which is why the warrant is here. Um, expendable trusts in school districts require a public hearing for the expenditures to, to happen, but the board has the authority to spend from an expendable trust for the purposes of the expendable trust with the public hearing. So it is not a it is not a capital reserve, which I believe is the other thing that you're referring to that the, the town mechanism is. But it is. does mean on occasion we <clears throat> not picking a fight. Oh no, I understand. We have seen at times where unpopular things have happened mm -hmm. at a vote in the summer that people do not have enough notice about mm -hmm. and it has been not used to the right pleasure of the people footing the bill. Right. So it is very important that I am concerned about this. Mm -hmm. I personally am not happy with it. So one of the one of the 
I wanted to speak to this a little bit. I, I realized that we had a similar warrant, um, maybe an identical warrant with a, a slightly different dollar amount um, associated with last year. And what, what we've talked about as a board and what we've been trying to build up for a long time is um, not just a warrant that says we need, you know, uh, $30,000 for this particular item and $40,000 for that particular item. Um, and we also don't want to do the opposite, which is say it's buried within the budget somewhere. We've included $30,000 in the budget for these kinds of things. Um, both of those things sort of um, smack of disingenuity around how we would, would do this. And I think what we're, we're trying to do instead is to say <clears throat> we're trying to run, um, you know, a, a large organization with that requires a lot of upkeep and maintenance of the plant and the infrastructure let's just identify what those items are. The ones that are not just now or over the horizon a year or two from now, but are over the horizon 5, 10, 15 years from now. Um, the fact that we have a backlog of energy recovery units, uh, new roof replacements, um, and other well-related issues that we've been grappling with are all related to the fact that we, sort of as a, as a district, have not been good about keeping tabs on all of the things that we know that we're likely to need to replace in the future. So. Along with this, the, the theory or the, the plan for this expendable trust is an ever-updated capital improvement plan, or we'll call it an infrastructure list, of the items that that fund is intended to be used for. So what it, what it does is, hopefully, it would build some trust between the school board, the finance committee, the members of the public, that these are the items that this fund is intended for, not, oh, by the way, we need to buy this thing this year and knee-jerk our way into spending it, you know, out of the expendable trust. Because the... the um, I guess I should also add the two hundred thousand dollars there is not like a pie in the sky number. That is a, that is a number that is factored on if we spend money out of other existing expendable trusts that are geared specifically to water projects or roofing projects or other buildings and grounds projects. The injection of two hundred thousand dollars into this general fund allows for us to get projects sort of started and moving through this this plan. So the theory would be we would continue to fund this general fund year over year over year for the express use of the, the, the items that are on this particular list here, which range anywhere from, as Jackie had said, you know, roof replacements to HVAC um, uh, energy recovery units to resurfacing the track um, to technology infrastructure items so that we're not trying to jam those through, you know, like, you know, in, in a budget cycle or something else so that you can see this is the year that, you know, we need this many more Chromebooks than a normal buy just because of the purchasing cycle, for instance. So. Okay, before Neil goes, um, going off that, because you mentioned the word energy, mm -hmm. and I know that we put in a, a new system up there. We did. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing benefits from that? Are we, are we seeing money back, and where's that money going? Well, remember, it's not gonna, we're not going to see money back. We, it is the, the design of the project is to be budget neutral. So the, 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 maybe the, the more proper way to couch it is, are we seeing a larger return on that investment, or are we seeing that the energy credits and the reduced use of electricity and heating um, um, fuel is offsetting what our, our, our overall maintenance costs were. We have not done a full-fledged study on that yet over the last year or two, but we are we are staying within those constraints at the very at the very least. So I don't I don't have a specific. So we aren't you. hemorrhaging money because we did this and no, so far it's it's been a good thing. Could you eventually put that together just because I'm nosy and curious? Yeah, well, yeah, and I'm curious about it too. I think the. Um, this is not for this cycle, so this is this is this is something that's just kind of out there. I'm, I'm very personally interested in the idea of, of looking at a solar project for the districts, not because I think that it's it's a you know it's a it's a green and clean energy source, but because quite honestly, if we get to a place where we can do some net metering that becomes beneficial to us for a large enough installation, we're going to want to be able to take a look at it. It also has Im uh, implications for when and how we do the roofs if we're going to mount something on the roofs. Um, so we're going to need to study the whole thing all over again when we get to that stage, and that's likely when we'll do it, two or three years but in. But it would be nice if it's possible. I would love to see some mm -hmm. of the figures now, especially because we are doing this. It would be nice to hear, <coughs> oh, by the way, this project is doing this, and this is yeah. how it flows because yeah. we sold it on that. Understood. Understood. If you don't mind, I would appreciate that. No, that's fine. I, I'll also add... Um, the the savings are guaranteed as as right. well. So you, you know, if I was sitting here telling you, oh man, it's you know it's underwater, it's doing terribly. In theory, we would still be breaking even worse case because the savings are guaranteed by the the folks that had. But put we the had together. some unexpected problems at this point. We did this actually the the um, the propane boiler that we had installed was defective and they replaced it on under a warranty. So it was actually it was, we got a brand new brand new uh, propane boiler. But out you of it. did not have water. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? That was a separate issue. Unrelated, yes. unrelated yes. issue. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
we yep. had water. It was yes. just an ordeal to get it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Yes. And that's good to have cleared up for people in the audience yes. and the television. I was told you went for a week without water. No, and, no, you no, know, no. So it's always nice to make sure yes. we clear some of these we wonderful misconceptions. We can't open the school without water. I, we would, we would <laughs> That's not close. okay. Yeah, right. And what exactly was the problem? It, because it does tell us where our money's going. What happened? Right. There were a couple problems. Um, yeah. The, the pump um, and then the, the, the pump we had died to, yeah. and then we also were having trouble getting enough we had to keep drilling down getting enough pressure uh that we needed for the whole building okay <coughs> and so between those two and then we had to make sure the well was cleared mm -hmm. um, because you muck up everything when you go down there and we had to make sure that um, um that it that it was cleared and we could have right. it go through our pipes mm -hmm. okay so that's all good and yeah. we're all happy yep neil uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Two questions. Um, are you folks making a commitment that the voters would see in this warrant article that it will be used only for the following uh, items included in the long-term plan? <coughs> or are you just um, saying that that's what our intentions are, but if we decide to use it for other things, we can do that? Um, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not read that as a loaded question, but I, I think the, the, the reality is it's, it, it would be impossible and impractical for us to put the entirety of the CIP in, in the warrant article. Um, you know, that being said, if it's a question of a, of a reference to the CIP or indicating that the purpose of it is for items that appear, I'm using the term CIP, I, please don't, don't hold me to that terminology for it, literally, it, it, whatever the title of the list is. Understand, it's, it's a list of projects that are major initiatives that, that, that apply to the infrastructure here at the school. Um, that is the intent, and that was what, what we would, would ultimately use it for. Um, that being said, I think, I think there, there, are, there are two factors that, that get at the heart of what you're, you're, you're suggesting, Neil. The first one being that the names of these expendable trusts and the, and the way in which they're designed to be used is for the purposes that they're, that they're named for. Uh, anything beyond that is, is inappropriate. So to the extent that we can name this to link it to an infrastructure project list, we intend to do that. We, we, we do want there to be a hard linking because if for whatever reason I'm not doing this or the rest of my colleagues aren't doing this anymore, we, we want it to be associated with each other. We're not trying to pull a fast one on anybody, okay? Um, secondarily, um, I think, you know, once we set some past practice around the idea that um, this list is the thing, this, this infrastructure plan is the thing that this fund is designed to fund, that is going to set that sort of in motion and keep things rolling. Um, not just because it's a good idea, but because that's really where the funding comes from. We don't want the future boards, and I don't think future boards want to try and find 60 grand to resurface the track out of nowhere. Um, putting it together like this makes it, you know, frankly easier for people to do it that way if we're, if we're sticking to a plan that's transparent and useful. Now with these, oh, I'll, I'll let you uh, go first. A comment and then a follow-up question. That, that sounds like reasonable. Um, accommodation because you're making a commitment by having the trust name yeah. refer to this document assuming that the document isn't changed radically mm -hmm. during the course um, the second question that I had uh, has to do with the source of the two hundred thousand dollars you said it's coming from surplus could you relate that to the additional money and give us the dollar amount of that you're getting from the state one-time money that has nothing to do with it the cost of an adequate education but is a one-time grant to the oh, school I see. district I see yeah so yeah they're 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 sort of at opposite ends of the funding equation a little bit um, we did not go through this budget cycle taking that money into consideration we built a budget based on the budget that we needed and so we did not actually factor that in um, but I, you know, and, and so the money that we're getting for as far as where goes, it's a total of one million one hundred or almost two two hundred thousand um, dollars. But then split between where and John Stark. And how much of that is going to John Stark? Yeah. And what are you proposing to do with that? That's well, one time money that will never be reported. It's uh, unlikely to, to be repeated. No, it's a fair point. And to clear that part up, J Jackie's right. We, the, the money, because of the timing for this, it, it happened 
when, when did it happen again? When did they pledge it? It was like, it was October, it was just before October, just after October. Yep. It was just, actually, it was just before. It was just before they had set the tax rate. So it, it happened quickly enough that the current tax rate is contemplated based on that funding being there as part of the adequacy numbers that the state gives to the schools. So the, the number for just John Stark is... 400000 Yeah, 420000 and $10, $10 right? Um, that is already factored into the adequacy number in the operating budget for this year. So it is not sitting around in, in surplus, if I'm, if I'm getting the gist of your you're, meeting. You're confusing me. The state budget provided two different kinds of money to every school district in the state. <coughs> One was an increase in the adequacy funding, mm -hmm. which would continue in the future. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That money should have been, ref should be reflected in the tax rate. But then, and I believe you don't get that until after July 1st, 2020. There was a second sum of money, $1.1 million, that was granted to each school district where, including John Stark and Ware School District, $1.1 million or $1.2. That was a one-time grant. I think you need Absolutely. to be more specific in explaining which part of which pot is being used in which year. And if that's too complicated to do now, um, perhaps you could send us some sort of a document which shows how this money is being expended. And of course, we're going to be asking the same thing for the Ware School yep. District. Yep. And how that money is coming to us, though, is calculated altogether. Um, they, what we were provided for, uh, they did specify one-time funds, but it's all coming together, right, Kathleen? Yeah, that's um, what she was just no, the one time the one time money is coming to you money. to the it's to where, which has to be divided between the where school district yes. and John Stark. Mm -hmm. But where school district is getting a separate amount of money yes. for mm -hmm. its ongoing adequacy, mm -hmm. as is John Stark. And we need to see all of those numbers because they'll have a major impact on the tax rate, depending on that's what correct. we do with them. So part of it has already occurred, actually, and that's okay. what we're trying to, to get at here. We, I think the terminology Which that we're using. Which part has occurred? So the 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 one-time piece has has occurred. No, no, no. It's no. the adequacy that's I'll occurred. Uh, uh, the yeah, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on. So the the distribute. If we're talking about the distribution versus what we're actually making for the calculation, those those are two completely separate things. So that's why I want to I want to kind of clear that part up. Okay. When we had talked about the the adequacy piece, and Kathleen, if you want to come up here and, and make and attempt at this as well, please do. Um, we we have already taken taken that uh, calculation into account in this particular cycle or in this particular yes. year, rather than actually pushing it further along when the money actually shows up. Okay, does that does that answer the question or not? That's no. Okay. Let I'm going to have Keith sure. talk to you back and forth. He's the state rep that's up at sure. the house, so sure. this is a good so, time to have that dialogue. So the adequacy piece took effect immediately. Mm -hmm. You got that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's already in the tax rate. And right. Right so that's gone. Mm -hmm. Next year, the adequacy will continue. Indeed. Yep. And then as of October 1st next year, we'll be getting the one time money that you was talking about. Okay. And presumably, you can account for that in this budget. Well, not presumably, you have to. We have to. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so um, my point is they, they put that all together. Um, no, only, it's not all together. It's only all together in the table that they initially produced. Yep. But I already but what, created one document for Kathleen yeah, that shows specifically what the where yep, school will get. Sure. The same thing can be done for Stark. It's a little more complicated, though, because you have to do the where piece and, and the anchor piece, piece, and you have to have these numbers from the two mm -hmm. separate accounts mm -hmm. in order sure. to do that right. mm -hmm. calculation. And all of these are estimates. Mm -hmm. right. I think I told you that it's likely they'll go down. Right, because of ADM. The, of the, yeah, of okay. the numbers you gave me. So, so is it possible going forward that we can get a better handle on these numbers before yep. we get too further down the line because mm -hmm. we have to explain what we're doing and I know you have to explain. It would help if we all had a clearer yeah. explanation, and, please. Uh, and we are we are working on that for the hearing next week, but uh, we, as, as far as the, we have to count our revenue as we talk about the impact of this on the tax rate. Um, but what I was saying is we had not, we built the budget going through the same process that we always do, and we did not say, oh, we have one-time funds that are coming through. And, and, and so maybe we should, but we did not. I, un I understand that. The budget is separate from your revenue. Spending is the budget. Yes, revenue is exactly. something different. Mm -hmm. But now you're telling us 
um, we plan to spend two hundred thousand dollars by putting it in a trust mm -hmm. and at the same time you jumped from spending to the revenue side and said we're going to take that money out of surplus mm -hmm. and as soon as you said that mm -hmm. the question is is this a surplus that will arise in this calendar in this fiscal year yes. the next fiscal year from your operations as we normally have surplus mm -hmm. Or is this surplus going to arise because we have unexpected additional revenue right. from two sources? So that's where I was answering your question in the first order. We, in this fiscal year, we do not have money from two sources. We have it from one source in this current fiscal year. In the next cycle, we will have it from two sources. So the surplus, which can only come from this fiscal year, will be based on the one source, which has already been baked into the, the, the tax rate calculation. So it is not part of our surplus. It is just not part of the, the, the surplus that goes into where, where the, 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 the town is funding for it. Does that, let does that let me sense? try to make it, <clears throat> make it clear to myself by giving you an, a numerical example. Sure. Let's assume that the additional money mm -hmm. for this year, which ends on June 30th, this is the year mm -hmm. we're in now, this is, what, 2020. Mm -hmm. We're preparing the budget for 2021. We're in 1920. Let's assume that before that, that we were getting an additional $250,000 from the state. It was unanticipated last year when we did the budget, mm -hmm. so that is going to fall to surplus, unanticipated revenue. No. No. That's already in the budget for this year is already done. They did it last year. Mm -hmm. not, they can't change that budget as they're getting new money. That mm -hmm. new money went into the tax rate getting cut there. Right. I, I, I was trying to talk about surplus. I understand what surplus you're saying. Surplus relates to the budget they created last year and the expenditures they have this year, period. But what about unanticipated revenue? That that, that's directly. what we're trying to say. It, there, there won't be any unanticipated revenue because of this. In the current year, do we have unanticipated revenue? No. 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 Exactly. And we have a surplus? Yes. Yes. Okay. Next and year, the year that... Surplus, what? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, the year that we're talking about, 2021. Yeah. You know that you're going to have my numbers, the extra two hundred fifty thousand yes, dollars. You sure. got it once last year. You're getting it this year, and you'll get it in the future, subject to the adjustments that yeah. that uh, Keith was talking about. But you're also going to get my numbers, four hundred thousand dollars of one-time money. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for 2021, this budget, yes. when you say you're taking two hundred thousand dollars out of surplus, no. is that coming out of the $250,000 of additional money you're getting for adequacy. Is it coming out of the $400,000 that you're getting for Neither. one time money? It's coming out of this year's budget. The 2020, 20, yes. 1920? 1920. The surplus, this, it's a warrant article related to this year's surplus. Nothing to do with the budget yeah. at all. So As we for build next for year. next year. If we fa yeah, exactly. If we fast forward a to this year. meeting next year, we'll be talking again about warrants, and then you, you will have an <coughs> excellent point. Will, that, will we be doing it out of surplus or not? But I will also say that won't be unanticipated revenue at that point either. It will also be right. baked in. So the scenario you're, you're bringing up, which is a good one, is one that, that we this don't have any unplanned scenario. revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and last year's. And last, yeah, right. The year before. Yeah. And the, the, the $200,000 that you're taking out of surplus mm -hmm. for this year, okay? Sure. That is a result of the money that came in last year. It's not a, it's it's not a revenue current. thing. It's, a, it's an expenditure it's thing. It's a budget thing. Yeah. We, we have spent $200,000, well, more than $200,000. We've spent the, the surplus amount less than we had anticipated that we would spend. The revenue, we don't build the expenditures based on the revenue, right? I mean, the, the revenue, it's all made up in, the, in the, the amount that the tax rate winds up paying for. The expenditures are made up on their own. So if we have a surplus, it's because we did not spend as much as we intended to spend. Tom, you want to weigh in on this a bit? Well, yeah, not to confuse it, but it's just that, to me, it's just like you've always done. Mm -hmm. The surplus That's is... Right. It comes from your existing budget, yes. and you're, calc you're uh, estimating that at the end of the year you're going to have a surplus of two hundred thousand dollars, more than that, yeah, or yeah. something yeah. in that order, and that you want a warrant article in order to set two hundred thousand dollars of that surplus right. aside and so into this general maintenance fund. And uh, sorry, I will add one thing to that: we uh, every year we do have unanticipated revenue. It's just a fact of life, right. and that we do not that is not considered part of the surplus that we use 
for this purpose. So even even if there were unanticipated revenue, it doesn't doesn't have any impact on this. It is only from the expenditure side of the equation. It used to be we used to get um, surplus uh, checks back from or surplus payments back from health trust back when they were required to pay back districts yes. for all of the premiums that they had paid historically. That went to unanticipated revenue. We didn't actually consider that as part of the surplus. So I'm trying not to repeat this, but it's it's confusing to me. You had a budgetary surplus of $200,000. You expect a budget surplus of $200,000 because you are spending $200,000 less than the taxpayers appropriated. Right. Yes. It, so we had In addition to that, you're going to have, again, my numbers, $250,000 of revenue that was not anticipated? No, that, that, that is, it was anticipated. We anticipated the revenue from the state. Well, and we we weren't able, it went directly, it, it would, never went to the school system. It reduced right. taxes. Yeah. yeah. Last this year. This year. This right yeah. now. Yeah. Right and, now. The December payment. Yep. Yeah. And so we know with just our GMR for our health insurance, the fact that it was, we had a GMR of 9%, it came in at 2.4. We know that there's a delta there right. in between that will go towards, we're expecting to carry that right. through unless something happens mm -hmm. through to the end of the year okay. to contribute to that 200000 Would it be reasonable then to expect that next year or at whatever time we get this additional one-time money, you plan to put it in this trust fund? We had not talked about that. We, yeah. um, But next year at this time, knowing that we have right. $400,000 of one-time funds, I could see us proposing putting that 400000 if it is, the surplus exists at the end of the year, right. into this fund. As opposed to letting it go to pay and reduce taxes. That would be one option that we'd have a year from because now. Because it's one-time money, and that would create an unbelievably it would troublesome that. blip for taxpayers. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if that's if that's the direction you're headed in, I think we're, we're sort of bound by what we can and can't consider surplus to put into an expendable trust like this. So in practice, it may not work out exactly as you have earmarked it, but but to the extent that, you know, $400,000 doesn't drop to the bottom line to improve the tax rate in future years, then mm -hmm. yes, we could we could consider doing something like that. Yeah. I, I, I think it's more it is more complicated than we're actually talking about it. One of the things that we get down to, you know, brass tacks about right about now after the public hearing is what is the impact going to be with with the surplus that's left over and the tax rate? Because ultimately we don't want to see an increase in the tax rate, but we also don't want to see a sharp decline in the tax rate that winds up having things kind of go up and down like this all the time. Right. That's been an, an ongoing thing we've talked about for some time. So if that's the issue that you're really getting at, Neil, here, is that we don't want to, from this one-time sort of influx of cash, see a huge drop in the tax rate to only see it come back up again, <coughs> and it would be more prudent for us to spend that money in a, in a way that, you know, goes into, a, into an expendable trust like this. I don't know whether or not it's going to have the impact you're looking for it to have, because I, I don't think we can earmark the dollars that way. But we, we can strive to find a solution to the problem that you're bringing up, because I, I don't think it works that way. But it would go, and it would go towards what I understand the legislature to wanted. I mean, yeah. the infrastructure, if it went into a fund like that, it does right. help do, I think, what the intention was. So is right. this warrant article basically a no cost to the taxpayer because you're taking it out of surplus? That's the intention. Correct? Yes, yeah. Well, yes. no, that's there not, is no, that's there's not some true because if it, it, it didn't spend it, it would go to Right, it would go taxes. back, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. which leads to the other question. You say <coughs> this money is being freed up because of a change in health insurance? Part of it, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that going to continue? We know this year we're at a negative 2.7% GMR, so we know our health insurance costs this year are going to be lower. Next year are going to be lower than this year. Right, but I, we, don't but we don't know if that's a trend. We don't know if it's some of it is driven by health trust actuarial needs. Some of it's driven by our our use. Our Usage. use, yeah. I mean, the, the issue the issue is 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 this, and it's consistent with the spiking that we want to avoid. Right. If in fact it's the best estimate of Kathleen and everyone else that this reduction in health insurance is likely to be an ongoing reduction, then to put this money into a one-time, into a trust fund denies the taxpayers the benefit of a permanent lowering, mm -hmm. and based yep. on estimates, a permanent lowering of expenses. <clears throat> and that's dubious. If, on the other hand, this is a one-time blip, 
It's going to happen this year and a little bit next year, but it's not expected to continue, then putting this money into surplus in the way that you're suggesting, from my point of view, makes sense. Okay. The problem that we have at the end of the day, Neil, um, is that we've got several million dollars worth of backlogged, um, uh, we'll call it like maintenance issues and infrastructure costs that we need to address. And the, you know, to, to use the same term you did, I think the dubious way to do that is to try and jam it through in the budget or uh, try and find ways to spend copious amounts of dollars now to do it. Um, and just get it all done in one fell swoop. We, we can plan it out over several years and spend far less money each year to do so. The intention is not to take $200,000 and squirrel it away for a rainy day. It, the intention is to say, if we take $200,000 this year and next year and the year after, and maybe a little less than the year after that, maybe a little more the year after that, because we've got this plan that's showing you all the things that it takes to run the infrastructure for the school, that's what we're trying to do. Um, Candidly, we can put some of those things in the budget, but we know that that's not the right choice for everything. We would prefer to be transparent and say, here are all the things we're trying to do. Here's the warrant article that funds the thing that does this. You can't not pay for these things. I mean, we have to pay for them at some stage, and we're just we're laying it all out for you. Rather than coming to you this year and say, by the way, you know, we need 5, 10, 15 things, and it's a lot of money, and we really should have thought of this beforehand, but we didn't. Sorry, we just need to, to, to throw a big warrant article on the table. That's not the right way to do this. No, so. and we talked about this plan last right. year that we wanted transparency. Mm -hmm. We wanted to see a plan, and that was the program that was requested. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, what you're, what I'm hearing you tell us now, correct me if this is not an accurate reflection, we expect to have an ongoing surplus in the health lines for a number of years, and our proposal is that we take this money and rather return it to taxpayers, that we put it away for essential uh, physical repairs to the building, which if we don't do it this way, will result in a tax increase in the future. No, I think that I think that's a that's a mis mischaracterization of what I'm saying. I'm saying this year we know we have a surplus, so rather than ask for a warrant that puts additional money, you know, beyond the surplus into a fund that shows you how we would like to spend it, um, we're saying we, we feel that we have a surplus where it could come from. Let's take a hypothetical situation where we have a year where there is no surplus, either because that we don't see the savings from health insurance or because of some other issue, you know, occurs that we can't have a surplus, we would very likely still propose or consider proposing a warrant article that asks for deliberate funding of a warrant or of, a, of an expendable trust, not from surplus. So these two things do not have a, a hard and fast correlation forever in this year because situationally we have it. That's why we've done it this way. Zach, with this warrant article, I Thank understand you. that we're lining up projects. I, I understand yeah. that. I'm a funny person in that, yeah, I get we have problems and we need things fixed. Do we actually have real hard numbers for these things because so often people want money that is for the things, question yeah and you know there's no cost and then suddenly from outer space you find out that gee we want need to be rebuild new york in order to get this thing done so the the tipping point is for us and wanting to do this was something along those lines we, we were along the lines of thinking that okay look we know that we're gonna have to replace these energy recovery ventilators on the roof um they're you know they can't be more than 28 or 30 grand because that's what they were the last time we looked <laughs> essentially double that number, triple that number, and that's right. really what they wind up costing once we started looking into it. And we're like, holy cow, we really need to get a handle on the numbers and plan these things out because you can't put an eighty or $90,000 you know, chunk of change into the budget to pay for one of these, and we've got 11 of them, right? But my question is, will you keep those costs open in front so they say, yes. okay, we, we've got this list, this is what the current rates are, mm -hmm. and we're planning for possible inflation next yeah. year, so that at all times the taxpayers have a really good handle on what yeah. we're expecting to spend instead of, oh, gee, we said it was 60, but yeah. heck, now it's 260. Yeah, yeah. that's the intention. I, I Just bear with us, understanding that's an evolving and developing exhibit, but that is precisely the intention. We, we started with an Excel spreadsheet that had 12 lines on it. It grew to 20 or 30 lines. We realize that some of it can be funded from this expendable trust. Other items really don't belong in this. They really are extensions of what we do out of our of our other operating lines within the budget. So we have to take some time to figure out where they all go. Um, I am trying to free up time myself to make a better exhibit for this for us to all share and understand either the public hearing or the deliberative, deliberative session. But even even just seeing how the sausage is made, you know, in front of the public, I, I hope anyway. Uh, gives you some window into what we're attempting to do rather than assuming that we're trying to pull a fast one on everybody. The dollars are large. 200 grand is a lot of money. Um, but, you know, we, we are being transparent with the also large cost of a lot of these items that, that exist here. Well, I think we've made huge leaps from when I joined the Finance Committee 
and <coughs> we had some very <coughs> clear communication yeah. Yeah. and now it's very clear and pleasant because we all have a lot more on the table and the transparency is there and we can have these dialogues so right. I I'm glad Dennis you said you had yeah. questions uh, do you have an idea of what you've had for surplus over these past few years so we get an idea of I mean are we talking two percent three percent of what your budgets have been I, I don't mean, know. Has it been consistent? I mean, yeah, we we we've been we do. Because then we can get that. an idea or say, okay, if it's been consistent of two or three percent, mm -hmm. then we know that we're gonna you're gonna be able to fund that oh, yeah. adequately. Got a thing for us. One thing I know about insurance: while you're running low this year on insurance, insurance is it was my business. It's a wild card. It yeah. depends yeah, it on yeah. ages. It just depends on exposure. Right. It depends on. The age rates. There's so many factors, and depending upon if you have attrition of a different age group going in or out, right. and where that is, one minute you can say, "Hey, it's down here," and the next second we just went, and it, that is a very fluctuating thing, and that's just the nature of the beast. A couple of years ago, we were not the envy of nope. uh, of New Hampshire because it was like 29 percent GMR. <laughs> yes. It didn't come in there, but. Yeah. Um, we, we, we were upset. <laughs> that was it, that was hard. I would love to take a victory lap and say <laughs> it's because it's because we've done the high deductible plan, but uh, this one year isn't enough to consider doing anything like that. But we have made an effort to, with yeah. usage and to try to make sure we have educated consumers of healthcare, yeah. um, and and so we hope that that had an impact. We won't know. I mean, if if this is sustained, <clears throat> we'll all be glad that that's the case, and maybe then we can we're going to go on the road yeah, right. and have uh, <laughs> other uh, districts do that. But right. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Right, uh, but, but if you've had surplus in previous years, it's not necessarily because of health care. Right. Correct. Right. right. Yeah, student so. need. So actually, one of the biggest drivers that's the most common one that contributes to a surplus has to do with out-of-district placements. Um, students that, you know, were in district. And well, yeah, right. But then they transfer out. Okay. Or they're no longer, uh, uh, the, the services maybe are no longer needed. Mm -hmm. um, those are things we have to budget for and plan for. And then, you know, 18 months later, that's when the budget comes to a, 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 a finish. So yeah. there's a lot that can change, particularly with a very small district like this and a very small cohort of, of students that need those kinds of services. And it has a pretty big impact on the budget. That's, that's a traditional thing. I don't want to say it's like that every year, but. Um, you know, where are we with that this year? What's that? Where are we with that this year? I, that's a good question. I, I, the You're talking with, with What's student What's our bottom need. line right now? Oh yeah, our but surplus is 900-ish now. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, we still have six months. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yeah. last year, um, we gave back 400,000, and it's ranged uh, within a 10-year period between yeah. 150,000 to six, almost 700,000. Yeah. And that's just surplus, meaning money that was appropriated but not spent. Yes. Yes, and that is. Yeah, exactly. That, yep. It does include. <laughs> it, does it does include. It does include revenue. It does include unanticipated revenue because we yes. have to. Yes. But that can't yes. be included in what we. Yeah, we're, it's it's a bit semantic, but the 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 title of that exhibit there is uh, unreserved fund balances. The things that drop to the unreserved fund balance are anything that you you know you you got in unanticipated revenues and you did not spend in expenditures. Um, less anything that you put into expendable trusts, right? Mm -hmm. So that's even after expendable trusts have been funded as well. That's what's been given back to the, to the taxpayers. So when my understanding is at the end of the year, the school district returns to the town any, my words, and these are not exact, money it doesn't spend. Yeah. Does that include surplus, as you folks have been defining it, and unanticipated revenue? Yes. And it always includes 100% of the unanticipated revenue. We, we, we do not spend, we, we cannot consider that surplus to put into expendable trusts or other things. Or any but, other it, but it automatically goes back to this. Yeah. 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 Which is why this year's the money from the state, it's unanticipated revenue, and it's a, we, we are considering it a pass through. Right. Okay. Right. Tom? I think I'm all set. I, I, would, I don't want to. This meant you wanted well, to say I, I did, but it was it was a little ways back in the discussion. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm all set for now. Anybody else before we go back to Neil? <laughs> and this is an easy one. Let, let Keith have something to say. Quick question. So would you, are you going to publish that list? Is that what you're? In That's the intention. There? Yeah. Yes. Either either the list or I'm working on a Tableau public thing that will have the data behind it that you know shows shows the whole thing. So yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, you mentioned that there's thirty thousand dollars in the budget for capital expenditures. Could you tell me the page and line number? I'm 
I'm, so, I'm sorry. The, Did I misunderstand you? Uh, maybe. Uh, when you were when you were giving us figures. Um, when I was. No. In front of you. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Zach said there was thirty thousand dollars, and that was the number. And I thought it was for capital expenditures that was in the budget. It was at a time when you were saying you want to put all of these capital expenditures in this expendable trust, and then you said. As it's sort of in a parenthetical, but we have thirty thousand dollars of capital expenditures in the budget. No, I, I don't think we do. No, no, okay, no. no. Sorry, sorry if there's some confusion there. We we talked about some some thirty thousand, uh, roughly thirty thousand dollar numbers related to student services and co-curriculars, but I don't no. think that I, I recall being okay. capital. I must have misheard. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So just going back, then every year we've had a surplus, though. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our tax rate could have been worse without the sur surplus, correct? Well, mm -hmm. you can spin it that way, I suppose. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah, it could have been higher. Yeah, yeah so yeah. this is what Just they clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> One wants to know where the money yeah. is. You know how that I goes do. Yeah. Go ahead. That's just data. So a question regarding the way this warrant article would appear on the, on the warrant or on the ballot. Um, usually has an estimated tax impact. In this case, does it show zero? N n I doubt that it would. I think we, we can still calculate like a, a tax impact. Yeah, calculate the impact. Yeah. As okay. if it was fully funded. Yeah. Yeah. Me meaning, um, let's say you have enough surplus to fund this, mm -hmm. and you know you, well, I guess you won't know that you will at the time we vote. Mm -hmm. Right. You only well, you know you at don't. the end of the school year. Yeah, you that's, don't. So does it say up to? Yes. It's always up to, always. I mean, that, that's just prudent. It just makes good sense for the reason you're bringing it up. We put a tax rate number associated to it because it's, it's not so much that it's additive, but you can consider it subtractive in the sense that, you know, if you... Yeah. If, it, if the tax rate with this article in was this, it would be this higher number with it out, basically. Okay. So we have to know what the delta is to, to be able to That is what, what I would want to see. So. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Going from that point, you know, we have these wonderful discussions and all these wonderful ideas. But as you go forward and we actually find out that, yes, this will work and it's going to not, it's going to be tax neutral, so to speak. Mm -hmm. When do we actually put that out so that the average person has a clue? Because we have this wonderful discussion, mm -hmm. and we know that we can get really <clears throat> deep into our pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. But until we go back to the next tax cycle in the following year, yeah. the taxpayers never really have a grip, and they wander around for the next 9 to 12 months going, well, did we just get clobbered or not? Because it's it's really very difficult to understand. <laughs> I'm not so, laughing at you. This like this is the perennial issue. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, right. is there a way that you guys could, because not all of us have children in school, so we're not going to go be swimming on the website. Is there a way you could actually let a notice out when you actually see that we've got, you know, that it is going to be tax neutral? Taxpayers, good news. <laughs> it did come out this way, so that we actually could have. A clue? Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I, or is I just, that asking too much? No, no, no. It's not a too much thing. I, I just tell you my, my my personal gut reaction to that. There is so much that could be spun around that one way or the other, especially if it comes from the school. That hey, good news. This is this is tax neutral. Even even if in a very technical way, it isn't truly tax neutral. There, there's a lot of our discussions, I think, sort of revolve around the notion about what is neutral, what isn't neutral, what is taxpayer dollars. When are we are we really giving money back to the taxpayers, or are we really reducing future year tax rates? And that's sort of the dark art of what's going right, on here, but it's, right? It's easier to get a, a grip on the town in that way yeah. than it is in the schools. And the schools are very, they're almost like a, a black ahead. magic art, you know? Yeah. And we're all like, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. what ball are they using and where did they get it? Because there are things you can say. I've been at this for years and I still right. go, really? Mm -hmm. Did they just say that? So all I'm saying is, is there a way that if you write that article like you did for the boilers, mm -hmm. When you finally did it, if you put out a blurb, look at how this is going, here are the costs, see it is going in that direction, that we could kind of sort of maybe yep. have a, a, a maybe pretend clue? So maybe what I'll do, if this seems like the right middle ground, is every year, and I'm already late in doing it, Lorraine and Jackie know that, is putting <laughs> <laughs> putting my annual report together for the John Stark District. And um, it is it is designed to encompass all of the things that have happened over the prior uh, school year or, or calendar year, depending on how you look at it. 
um, one of the things I can focus a little bit more on is some of these. Um, I, I usually write a, a little blurb around kind of how we, we finished the prior fiscal year and how we're, things are shaping up with Warren articles and things coming down the pike. Um, to the extent that I can sort of talk a little bit more about like initiatives that were funded by the voters and sort of how that's panned out, whether it's a budget neutral thing or yes. whatever it is, I can, I can work on it because in that form. Because those people that have children in school, they, yeah. they kind of see some of this. Mm -hmm. Those of us that just pay into it mm -hmm. and I'm getting anything out of it. Um, it would be nice because that way, and if you phrase it in a way that those of us that don't have kids can actually say, mm -hmm. oh, this actually made sense, mm -hmm. that would be very helpful. And sure. I think you would be reaching a much broader audience. Yeah, just uh, a group of us met a few days ago to see if there's a way that we could continue the newsletter from the library, the where in the world. Oh, what a good idea. And that often has uh, stories in it related to the schools. But they're usually related, and they should be related to like student activities or student awards or things like that. But they really would be also appropriate if there's a major project that's finished, uh, even a few paragraphs that included in something like that so it becomes public knowledge that you've just uh, finished replacing the, uh, the air exchangers on the roof of, of John Stock Regional sure. School. Sure. I mean, it, it would would go through your same communication process as it does for student activities, mm -hmm. and it would, to some degree, uh, fill the <coughs> gap that I think Lori's talking about without a lot of effort. Nothing against your report, but I used to write those for the Board of Select, but I don't know how many readers they have. Uh, <laughs> you mean not everybody in town reads my report? Well, <laughs> and it actually... <laughs> <laughs> it's a fair point. It's a fair point, Keith. I'm working on it tonight, I promise. <laughs> Good. This, but I, I will say, one of the coolest things is when you started saying we're building the new boiler system. Yes, because from the Finance Committee, we had a lot more input and were able to be more hands-on. That was great. I mean, I picked up the phone. I was on the phone to you, and I was on the phone to the principal, and I was up on that roof and getting to look around. And it was nice to finally see and understand. Yeah. And I think there's a very large population that does not get any of that because we're so driven by children, we forget the other three quarters who are footing the bill for this. And it's very important that we remember to engage everybody and let them see. Otherwise, it's like, where did my money go? I don't see it. So it's, I'm just, I think Tom is right. If we could just kind of combine the two, it might help us a lot. Well, we actually, I, I think we have some of that already that we aren't maybe doing as good a job as we should at communicating, but we do. I do a monthly report that includes a lot of kids stuff, but it also <laughs> includes updates on projects, and yeah. so do the principals. But I have but nothing you, at my home. Right, right of course. course. So, course. so, so like, I think if we could partner. Um, yeah, and we just, that might not continue that. It depends right. on whether we can find the, the right people Somebody. who are able to do it. You'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just had a. Following the thread of the annual report, I think that, there is interest in them. In my experience, I have seen people take them. They look at the financial part. They read the reports, not all of the reports probably, but the ones they have an interest in. And so I think it would be uh, greatly advantageous if the school reports were everywhere in town, in the libraries and maybe in the two or three stores. Um, they have in the past brought some copies but I think if we got as many copies as we could into the hands of people before mm -hmm. the vote. So in Henniker, they publish it right into the town report. Do they not do that down here and where? They used to do it, and it would be back to back in the same yeah. yep. volume. Exactly. Now they are separate, mm -hmm. okay. and I can't speak for the last year because I was I'm out of the loop now. I'm just out there, <laughs> but um, <laughs> people would come in. And there would be stacks and stacks and stacks of town reports, and then we would run out of school reports. Um, but I think those reports are very valuable. Okay. And again, put them where everybody goes, because mm -hmm. not everybody's living at the schools or the library. Yeah. And I'm just saying, you're missing a good two-thirds of people you really need to have. Put them next friends. to the beer. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was a very particular commentary on the town of Ware, right? <laughs> I just wanted to clarify something, the difference, because we're all going to be dealing with town budgets as well as school budgets. Right. And as far as surpluses and what happens to them, with the schools, unless it's put into a warrant article, it automatically goes back to yes. uh, offset taxes. In the case of the town, it's different than that. Anything that's not spent, that's the right. surplus, goes into what's called the undesignated fund balance. And that can only offset taxes if the selectmen mm -hmm. choose to do so. And sometimes they choose not to do so because we're, the, the town is responsible for the whole cash flow. And so that balance has to be kept at a point where there is cash available to, to fund whatever is there, town or school. They can't suddenly say, sorry, we used it all up. You guys can't pay anybody this right, year. Right, because then we have to borrow money, and the interest can actually right. cost so, us money. That so anyways, this, that, that's a key it. difference. In the town's case, it has to be an action by the board of selectmen in order to have money offset taxes in the case of the schools it's an automatic thing if we don't pass a warrant article like this it all goes back to offset taxes any neil uh zach could you <laughs> this is the neil show tonight <laughs> could, could you give us could you give us an estimate of the total cost that you expect to spend out of this trust fund uh, for all of these capital projects over the next 10 years or whatever do you have some sort of a rough I number it'd be yeah. hard to do Guessing. Yeah. We'll see what he says. You guys are guessing. Ten dollars. Yeah, we're gonna no, prices no. right rules. One point yeah. six. Yeah. yeah. I just sent you. Just sent it to you. Oh, you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the spreadsheet too. But, uh, Is that with inflation? <laughs> uh, two point. Yeah, it's about two point one million. Two two million seventy two thousand four eighty one. You were low. Yeah. yeah way so, so the we would have to put in. Uh, Ten years of two hundred thousand. Well, keep, keep in mind we also have some other. It, it's actually longer than that. It's more than ten years. It's about fifteen years worth of projects we're looking at. Okay. We have other funds that already exist. Uh, the biggest one that we have out there is the uh, like the roof fund, which will not fund the entirety of the roof, but it will but help us get started. You would utilize those. Of funds. course, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole plan is predicated upon it the fact builds. that. Yeah. It's not the let's save the other funds so no. we can get this fund. <laughs> no, no. I, actually, the one of the one of the hardest things about managing this is the fact that we've got all these shoe boxes with money in them that basically are set up for the, the original purpose and intent was more of a rainy day sort of thing as opposed to an actual forward thinking, forward looking plan. Um, so that's we want to spend all those, use them up, uh, work right through them, and then set up this more centralized, singular, expendable trust to sustain that project going forward. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> Just one more article? No. What, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're done with this. So you we really we, we, we saved the best for event. last. <laughs> yes. And, and uh, so we are introducing uh, the SRO again. Yeah. Um, and, and we do truly believe that it, that is a valuable position. Um, we're advocating for it once again. High schools all around the state and country do find it an effective way to partner with uh, the school administrators on crime prevention, on uh, emergency response, uh, conflict resolution. And uh, so we are going back out. We have retooled it last year. You'll remember it was split three ways. Um, some of the feedback we got was that it's spread too thin to be an effective position. And we feel like the need is greatest at the high school. And so it is uh, a position funded for the high school. So would you use this like the ambulance fund and the child that triggers the problem, are you going to build a family? <laughs> no. Because when are you going to hold the parents accountable? And, and so it's beyond just the, that piece. I mean, it, it, the services that and the partnerships, they, the school resource officer helps with emergency planning. Um, I personally had a great experience at my previous district working with the SRO. Our, our emergency planning was more effective because of, because of our SRO. So Does I would happen to have a policeman that I'm going to be paying for with a cruiser and the teachers that are taking classes for this, for the how to handle children, how to handle emergency situations, I would expect all those classes to disappear because now I'm having to put a professional in. Mm. And I don't want to hear that I am paying for people who are not going to be doing those jobs when I've already trained somebody else for that. Right. 
we, we think the need is beyond, it's in addition to training the, our, the teachers and, and those, um, in those classes. So we think it's beyond that. Uh, and I, I, I want to just add to this as well. There, there are, as, as we already know, this is, this is a divisive issue for some of the issues that you're bringing up, yeah. <clears throat> but also um, I think we, we recognize and, and still recognize that there is a, um, although what Jackie's getting at is we do not, we're not interested in getting an SRO in the school to prevent like an active shooter situation or to deal with those kinds of situations. There are plenty of parents and other mm -hmm. folks in town who yeah. believe that that is the case. This is actually more of a, of a, of a community and school uh, climate and culture kind of a component that, that we're advocating for. I want to also add to that to say, um, because it is a divisive issue and because there are many thoughts and feelings around the inclusion of an SRO here, that is why this one particular item remains a warrant article here. As a school board and as an administration, we, we are proposing it because we find that there's value in doing this. But what we've realized in doing this now, three, four, five years sort of out there, is that we can never, I don't think we're ever going to get on the same page for why this is a good idea or a bad idea. And that, in a lot of ways, is the purpose of why we put these warrant articles out there. It's a referendum uh, sort of vote at, at the end of the day. Go ahead, Dennis. So are, is the school uh, budget going to cover the entire cost of that? No, office not, or not the budget. The, the, the warrant article, right. which is being proposed here, would, would make that part of the operating budget if it, if it were to pass. For the school. But the not school. a shared position. It's not, right. You're not going to see Chief Moore right. present a component of like we did last year he right a piece a piece a and a piece, piece. Right. but how but that officer is still going to be a where police officer that is correct year round year round yeah. that's correct what's he doing the, so are you paying for him year round what is he doing the school is not in session I believe, yes we're paying for them year round but i don't i don't know what they what the what the plan is for the the summer months it's it's a fair point and i and i don't know the answer because for, it. for the town side of this mm -hmm. Are you covering the insurance? Are you covering the liability? Are you covering the training? Or are you expecting the town to pick no. it up for the nine months that we don't have this? My guy? understanding is that the arrangement, if, if, if we, the practical application, the practical installation of an SRO means that the school contracts with the local police department for the services of that SRO. The rate that is contemplated that's here is, I, I would imagine, is, is designed to factor in all of those particular items. We would not be interested in taking on the SRO position if it meant somehow okay. we needed to certify them as a law enforcement officer so or anything like that. contract yeah. position? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. would mean we now have a cruiser we have. Chief Moore did think, I think he, he spoke uh, at the library. At the, right, at the yeah. library that he thought he had a, a cruiser that was an older one. You, if we have somebody who's spending the majority of their time at John Stark, uh, they, they don't necessarily need the best cruiser. And he mm -hmm. could use one of those. Would so the he school, thought. Would Stark be buying that? No, no, no. I, I was just going to say that. Again, it'd be the contract. contract it's, it'd be part of the services that we're paying. So we'd still be on the hook for the maintenance, the replacement no. of it. No, it's under the contract. Build it into the contract. It'd be built into the contract. Assuming that actually aware. covers all yes. those costs, yeah. which it yeah. probably no, won't. No, no. It, so, so hold on. I, I, so. Yes, <laughs> it, Matt's right. <laughs> it may or may not. The the price that we have here is the price that we've been talking about. It is a separate discussion for a separate day around the adequacy of that particular contract piece there mm -hmm. but what we want to make sure that is very very clear in this conversation is John Stark is not trying to determine whether or not we're going to need to replace cruisers or right. do any of those kinds of things this warrant article is, is as Jackie had said it's a it's a it's intended to address the climate and culture within the in the building and with the student body and and an SRO a school resource officer um, at the rate that we have sort of pre-negotiated or talked with the where PD about about doing a pre negotiate is too strong a word um, or term for it it's um, like the fee that when there are other things outside of town, whether Asplunth needs a police officer to mm -hmm. direct traffic, yes. like a or they go to Dunbarton or somewhere else, or we ask somebody come in to help us, <clears throat> they charge a fee, and the police officer is worth $40, the cruiser is worth $20, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. That's what you're talking about. From a finance committee standpoint, if that's what we're talking about, a flat rate that we charge, as opposed to a contract that says we are going to pay for nine months the full cost of a cruiser 
and all that. If that's yeah. not in there, then you're talking about the per diem rate of what it costs, just like it does when we have a special officer somewhere else. I, th I think it's somewhere in the middle of that, actually. I, it, it, it's not going to be so, so piecemeal that we you know contract for this, the cruiser, the SRO, the whatever. We, I would imagine that the contract would be like a standard school resource officer contract that maybe is closer in nature on that continuum to like a detail contract like you, you were brought up with That's Aspen, right? That's what I'm saying. Uh, but it is designed to accommodate the school year at whatever the rate is for the school year that w would not go beyond what we've budgeted here or asked for. Or in the in the warrant of eighty five yeah. grand, which is what just eighty five. Eighty five, yeah. Oh, that's the amount you're asking. Eighty five grand, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it, I heard you say before that this was full time, twelve months. They would not be working for us for right. twelve months because we only need them during the school year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if this is only for the school year. <laughs> We, we are paying a contract rate that gets it for the school year. Yes. How, how the PD acquires the, the officer to, to do that is the, right. Another follow-up question. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I heard you say that this was not to take care of an active shooter. Correct. It is not, it is not designed. We, do, we are not trying to install a school resource officer for the sake of active shooter situations or, say, school. Then why do you need a police officer? So the, why don't you get a guidance counselor? No, it's fair. It's a fair question. So I think the 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 nature of the culture and climate piece for the SR for the for the SRO, which is um, I, I'm not as well versed in this as as you guys are or as as uh, Principal Dempsey is. Um, there are other cultural and climate related benefits that the student body uh, receives when a member of law enforcement is embedded within the school with the students. Will somebody explain those yeah. to us? Please do. I, I'm actually <laughs> hoping that in a in a less direct way, you know, when we think that a school resource officer is going to stop an active shooter, I think we, we think in terms of they're physically going to stop right. an active shooter. Which we're doesn't hope, work. Right. We're hoping that partnering with a law enforcement officer in our building, having that person be part of our community, helps to build the culture and climate that helps to prevent all sorts of things from happening um, or ad effectively address the things that do happen um, so basically you want a policeman in the school to be another grown-up to monitor these kids that's what it's coming down to is now we have teachers we have paras we have principals now I've got to hire a policeman because these children need so much monitoring and I, I, I would argue that it's more than monitoring. Right. We are trying to develop relationships and we are trying to But a police build a department community. could put together a yes. pr program that they could have a program where the high school students get involved with the police yes. program one day a week and it would be volunteer for them and it would be the school thing and we would not be fitting this $85,000 bill, the fact that we just now got our police department yeah, almost yeah, that, that's, Can that's we save that for our discussion? Yeah, that's, 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 no, that's, I'm that's just not, concerned. It's a fair concern, but, yeah. but we're talking about budget yeah. numbers right. and mm -hmm. warrant articles. Relative so to, that. to my, do I understand that should this pass, because the John Stark warrant is the same warrant in Ware and Henniker, that's right. the um, expenditure would be proportionally divided according to the enrollments of the two towns. And equalized <clears throat> valuation. It's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Just to. And you'd have to pass them both. It has well, to it's pass one warrant. Just yeah. Just, yeah. Just, it's right. just, just, just one. Warrant. The district is a, is a, yeah. Yes. Oh, so right. it has to pass in where and Henniker. No, no, it has to no, pass. It has to pass. Both of them in both. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Unlike last year, where it was in it both, was, right? It was yeah. three. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It was Thank very you. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> no. 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 Fair <laughs> question. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to prolong the defense or the uh, speaking against, but you know, I was one of the people last year was concerned about it being spread too thin, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and so if you're going to make a proposal, what you're proposing makes more sense to me than trying to cover three different schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing, and again, it's not the budgetary factor, but uh, personal belief is that even though you may not put a police officer in school to, to face an active shooter, uh, it very well may be a deterrent to that shooter never arriving to begin with, knowing that there's a, there's a, a police officer in the school. Mm -hmm. 
it also does have a, uh, a person, and this is part of last year's discussion really, who children, uh, students can turn to because they know he is a law enforcement officer and perhaps not say the same thing they would to a faculty member or even a guidance counselor. So, you know, I, I'll save that, the rest of what I have to say for when we discuss it, mm -hmm. but that's... Uh, it's a valid point. I, I think that the, the deterrent factor is an important one in looking at whether a resource officer is uh, important to a school. And I think our job is to propose what we think would be effective and uh, the, the voters can decide. Yeah, I agree. Matt. A uh, procedural question. Um, let's say that this warrant article passes. Would not the town of Ware still need to put a warrant article to hire this person that we can then contract out? I, that's yeah. a good question and I don't know the answer to it. I mean, so, uh, yeah. So, so the police department can hire new officers without our approval? The police, if I may, Go ahead now. we were told by the chief that he has an officer who wants to do this, and <coughs> despite the fact that he doesn't have enough officers now to cover <laughs> oh, where, he is willing to take this officer and put her into John Stark. So or then we would be down yet yes. another officer that yes. then the chief will come You're to the correct, taxpayers and say we need issue. to hire more officers. Exactly. So the town becomes vulnerable. Yeah, that was that was my question. The, but that's, the assumption is a police chief or the police will, will hire somebody, but course, it's not required. Right. Yeah, they may not know the answer to that. I mean, from the school's perspective, they just want to contract with the police department and get the service. I, I imagine it, it would work like this. If we say, good news, we've got our $85,000 check for our SRO, and suddenly the police chief says, well, sorry about that. We actually don't have an SRO to give you any longer <laughs> right. because of whatever you know came to pass. We would have to contend with that particular issue. Yes. But I, I respectfully, I don't think that's sort of yeah. within the scope of this warrant. We are. We are, we are speaking only to the fact that, you know, it's a warrant. Should we be able to get an SRO? This is the rate that which we would do it. We would contract with the Ware PD to do it. Kind of end of story right there, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can, can you provide some data to show that these SROs work? For example, um, we've heard some anecdotal mm -hmm. evidence from um, Jackie, but is there any, any data, in either nationally or in New Hampshire, that justifies the $85,000 for this, for this officer. So that it's not just a feel good thing, but that we really know based on studies or whatever it might be, academic work, that these officers have a particular impact and this is what we're getting for our $85,000. I'll make sure I have that as part of next <laughs> week's. And not just anecdotal stuff where. No, I understand that. I, I think the one the one thing that we will definitely try to avoid in this conversation, I'll, I, I will share it with you because this is one that I know is oft, oftentimes cited for <laughs> why you would do this, is like, oh, well, all the surrounding schools have an SRO. And that is, yes. that is I, just so you know, that is not on the radar of things that we think is appropriate or good or worthwhile for why we would do it. We're not looking to keep up with any Joneses. So Thank you. Um, to Jackie's point, we will <laughs> find other cases <laughs> for why it's a good idea. Yeah, would I believe person? Principal Dempsey had some information that yeah. he yeah. presented he at a school board meeting. Yeah, so. yeah. Would this person be armed in the school? Yes. They would have a, have a loaded weapon? Mm -hmm. yes, SROs tend to, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Does that contribute to this being um, a better hire than the guidance counselor or private security force or whatever you choose that's not a public police department? Does the fact that they have a loaded weapon influence your decision to go with police. no no I think the thing that inf I can speak for myself on this one the, the 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 reason that you would consider going with the police department for an SRO is because they have an SRO program that's designed to train within the realm of what it means to be an SRO not just a guy with a gun in the school so um, that's the principal reason why we would do it the fact that they carry a firearm is is part of the the rest of the position that, that comes along with it yeah so if your article were amended on the floor to read that the SRO may not take and loaded firearm into the school, you would still support it as amended? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Keith? I, I would. 
Yeah, I, I, <laughs> personally, yes, I, 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 I don't question about support or not support. Uh, wouldn't that also depend on what the police department themselves are? Right. Yeah, I, I don't know if yeah, I have yeah. That. yeah. I mean, I, look, the 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 uh, we're 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 standing behind sort of the point. Like, it's not about the it's not about the gun guys. I mean, yeah, so right. so if, if you did that and we said yes, and again, kind it of came to pass that well, geez, we can't actually hire an SRO because regulations say they got to have guns. Yeah. We're gonna come right back to the point to the table and talk with you guys about it and say, well, that didn't fly. So how can we do this again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not about the gun. It really isn't. <laughs> Yeah, because it might be about the gun. I, to, the yes, to voters. I totally. You're naming the thing that right. that's so contentious because so many people are in favor of it to say, yeah, with a gun, great, put them in the school. And there are just as many people potentially that say, terrible idea, right. don't ever do it, right? So that's just two vectors of all the things that are out there. Right. Mm -hmm. But for it, for a lot of different reasons and against it for a lot of different totally. reasons. Totally. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions, comments? Zach, I think you're done. You said this was the easy one. Uh, <laughs> I was worried about that. All right. Thank you, Zach. Thank you very much. Jackie. All right. And so are we ready to move to the wear budget, which is not the easy one? Are you ready to move I to the wear budget? I am. I am. We're going to be here Oh, yeah. I said. Okay. So are we, do we have the, do you have the paperwork you need? This one I have. Okay. Object summary. Object summary. Oh, there it is. What do we have? For where? This says it's John Stark. What page are you going to be running on, Jackie? I'm going to start with a, a broad uh, discussion. Object summary. object summary would probably be the best. One page says object summary. Where proposed object summary? Uh, are there any extras? Yes. Okay. Get better eyes. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my only one. Yes. Those are the still up quicks. Okay, so from uh, the bottom line, currently the default budget is up $173,320, which is 1.1%. Um, and then the proposed budget, uh, and this is the, the tougher number, this is $675,000, which is a 4.3% increase so the increases can be categorized uh, the salary increases are the contracts that were passed by the voters are you finding that no well once again they're not looking at the default so oh. all they're seeing is the one comparison the 675 number whatever what page is but you have the, so I just I, I reference two different documents I reference the default budget and the object and then the proposed budget okay I don't think we have the, do we have the default? Mm -hmm. We don't have the default. Ah. Okay. But uh, all the things that are in the, the default are also in the proposed. Right, but it makes it hard to I see understand, why it, I understand. Why it's hungrier than the other ones. Okay. Do you have one? I have one. Do four we need? Of, four of us out. Are those four here tonight? Uh, yeah, I don't see that. Oh, Do you want default versus object? Oh, that would be exciting. Just, just the one page would be great. You have your That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Naomi. Let's start. Let's start. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the salary increases result from the contracts that were passed. Last year, the voters approved two contracts for one for the support staff and one for the teachers. Could could you tell us what page and line you're on, please? The salary increase if you're on the object summary. Oh, it's at the top. Mm -hmm. Page one, the top is. It is the one hundred lines. So. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the two page 
should be a back and front document. Okay. Right. It's object summary, not the full detail. Got it. It's a little short page. Yep. This is a, a total of two page document. It is a two page document. Mm -hmm. Yep. Called object sum. It is. Thank you. Yes. And so those salary increases are a result of um, the collective bargaining agreements. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to health insurance, we, I talked about the guaranteed maximum rate. Uh, that decrease is... Question? Yes. On the contract, I don't recall them getting a 4.995% increase in year two. There's... Um, it is both the support staff contract and the um, teacher's contract. It's, it's, so it's. Yeah, but it wasn't at 4.9. Yeah. Because there's a difference between the default and the proposed of over 1%. Okay, so we have, um, there was. But the salaries, the percentages that we've had relative to individual positions, the teaching staff makes right. changes. There's also census changes. We hired different people and uh, different people came in. Like the insurance problem. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Keith. And could, could it also be that in last year's budget, the teachers' salaries were not, re the, the contract was not reflected in the budget? It because was it was a, a separate article. warrant article. Yes. Right. So yes. when we're comparing this yes, now, you're jumping. we're jumping, yes. it, it, we're comparing yes. the second year of the contract right. to, not the first year of the contract, but to the year zero year of the zero. contract. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the health insurance, that decrease is primarily, there are some census changes, but uh, it's primarily the our guaranteed maximum rate of negative 2.7. Going down to the, the 300s. Uh, we've got contracted services, physical therapy, um, some other IEP driven costs. Um, Thank you. We also have SAU shares in there. Oops. Sorry, I was looking on that. Three for you guys. Within the, the 400s, in the proposed budget, are people looking on the proposed budget? The, the biggest increase there is we are trying to, and I, I think it runs a theme that Zach talked about, we're trying to maintain our, the buildings. This is specifically a center woods uh, project where we're $60,000 to uh, do some work. That building is almost 30 years old and uh, doing some work. I think there's some parking, guardrails, parking, and, and some other maintenance issues. More than some other specifics. It's primarily the, the parking lot. There's some fixtures can you speak a little bit more to that Kathleen the, the guardrail needs to be replaced and the parking lot if we don't do something with it it's going to disintegrate it's just it's, it hasn't been fixed for years we've only fixed patches holes in the end. we've only patched so it's repaving the parking lot mm -hmm. that's Center Woods yes Center Woods. yes so this is on 700 property no, we are up at um, 400, 400 property services. Sorry. Um, the other purchased, serv purchased services, we have um, transportation makes up the primary increase there. Mm -hmm. um, we are, our contract with Golf Town uh, Transportation was up this year. Uh, we were uh, had the option to go out to bid, but what we were discovering with the economy being what it is, uh, the um, there are two bus companies, and they're having trouble hiring. They have increased their prices quite a bit, so we exercised our option in the contract to extend our contract. Is it for two years, Kathleen? Five. Five. That's even better. Um, to extend our contract rather than going out to bid again. 
Um, so there is an increase in that, and you'll notice there's a difference between those lines in the default. In the default, we factored in those increases for special ed transportation because that's mandated. But the general transportation, uh, that increase from the extension of the contract, because it was not a contract that was already voted upon, is included in the proposed but not the default. Oh. Okay. Does that uh, which include the, uh, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but the requirement to bus kindergartners? And that was my next uh, item. And so there's also $65,000 in there. Um, it, a law passed extending what is mandated for our transportation. It now requires that kindergartners, well, it will require <coughs> July 1, that our kindergartners are bused to and from school. And we have a half-day program, which means we need to pick up the students from the AM program, bring them home, and bring the PM students. So that adds a bus route. Well, it adds four bus routes, we're predicting. Um, we took this year's kindergartners and tried to map them out and so they were on the bus less than an hour um, and, and it, we figured we needed four buses for that so that was a mandated driver you'll see it in both budgets and then that's where that came from <coughs> it is within other purchase services yes And so, you know, that increase in transportation in the proposed budget extends to our athletic transportation um, and kindergarten athletic, regular ed, and special ed. Uh, with new programs, the 600, uh, we are, and in this budget, uh, there is $75,000 for a new math program at the elementary level. Uh, that is a six-year subscription and, and uh, there are also some smaller increases in supplies within the proposed budget. Uh, there's also within that line uh, an increase for computer software in the proposed budget. How much? Uh, 35000 and looking at fifteen of that is in the proposed but not in the default. We had some software costs um, that relate to like cybersecurity that so it, it is within the default budget, but fifteen thousand of it is in the proposed but not the default. Okay. And then moving into the 700s. Uh, the biggest request here is $127,000. We are trying to establish a regular um, cycle for replacing student Chromebooks and, and student instructional computers. Uh, right now we're in... Uh, a bad situation where we'll we'll buy a lot if if um, I think a, last year we earmarked some money bought a big uh, bunch of the computers they're all gonna come end of life at the same time we'd like to get on a more predictable path where every year we replace one-fourth or one-fifth of the computers and so that we keep it steady Yes. Um, you're getting this one-time windfall. Why aren't you putting this into, you know, using that as the source of funding for this ongoing need mm -hmm. since it's a five-year useful life product? Well, we could, that would work for one year, but the next year we're still going to need to replace um, one-fifth of the computers or one-fourth of and the computers. And it's $35,000? It is 
I'm sorry, I thought you said it was 35,000. 35 was software. Um, so that's in the 600 line. And in the 700 line, um, it's 127,000. 127, I see. And do you know how much you're going to be getting in that one time money? That's going to be almost 800,000. For where school district? For where school district. So that's roughly 30 years worth of computers. If we could do it that way, that'd be wonderful, but we can't no, because. Six years. Um, it's 127. It's, it's 127, call it 125,000 a year, and that lasts for five years, or is that just for one year? You have to spend 125,000 every single year? Forever. We get a, a computer and it lasts for five years, and then it is end of life. Um, Forever. The, so you're buying $125,000 worth of computers every single year? Yeah. Yeah. How many? It's a, right, it's a rotation. And it's not just computers. It's uh, um, servers, the servers and switches and, and all the things oh, that... Uh, the, but, but just tell me how many computers you're buying. Yeah, you said initially Chromebooks and computers. How many is that? Right. Um, if, and also, if any of the board members want to speak to this, yeah. the... Um, as far as it's, it'd be one fourth or one fifth of our. We're putting one fifth. Ideally, it would be one fourth. But how many is how that? How many? Quantity. Are you buying numbers. 10 computers for $127,000 or 127 computers for $127,000? I say one thing. I, I think I'm on the. Uh, Can you step up, please? Come on up, Come on up to say your name. I, my name's Jeff Anderson. I'm on the facilities committee, which includes technology. I think we're getting focused on one item, and we got to make sure we we step take a step back. All of that money is not Chromebooks, so it's it is including the servers. It's including like the the access points that was mentioned. It includes everything that deals with the technology components that we understand that. School. But what we're trying to do uh, is find right. out the components of this. Right. And by the way, said, let me just take one step back before I get to it. And as far as what Neil was saying earlier about, hey, one time money, let's buy like you know, all these computers. The problem is, even if we have brand new computers, we buy a million computers. After five years, even if we don't take it out of the box, they're no good anymore. They run into a useful life. That's why we want to get into constantly replacing the Chromebooks at a, <coughs> ideally be four years, but we're looking at a five-year cycle, which is the max that Google allows. Like Google themselves, when a Chromebook comes out and comes into production at the end, whether it's Acer, whether it's HP, whoever it is that makes it, they say, okay, this product started on pick a date, May 1st of this year. Even whether we buy it May 1st or we buy it September or even a year later, the five-year clock window starts at the date the manufacturer makes it. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing to take into account. Then there's a little bit of <clears throat> give and take. You buy one that's brand, brand new, and you see it, it's a little bit more expensive than you buy one that's six months old. So there's a little bit of, you know, play in that number, you know, that, that's why it gets a little tough. Right now it's about $235 roughly per Chromebook is, is roughly what we're looking at. 225 to 235, right around there. And what will be a year from now, two years from now, probably roughly that plus slight growth and increase if we need to replace it. But again, we're not just talking about um, the Chromebook replacement being all of that money. And I think that's where the problem we're, we're running into. The, the, the last thing for me to wrap that up is this doesn't even get us to a one-to-one -one relationship. This does not. What we'd like to get is, and this is not this year, this is like our pipe, this is our you know, wish list down the road, not this year, not next year or whatever, but we wanna to get to the point where a kid who starts, say for example, fifth grade um, or fourth grade, he can, he or she can get their Chromebook, it'll be like if it's a little job, I get my Chromebook and I have it for the, four to five year replacement, at the end of eighth grade, that Chromebook's no good. In the next, and each year we get to the point of recycling it. We're not even there yet, but we wanna get to the point of one-to-one, -one, but we're not even close to a one-to-one -one relationship right now with the, with the Chromebooks. But this covers, like I said, the Promethean, they're not called Promethean boards anymore. 
short but currently term. we have Promethean boards <laughs> on the school and we need to replace those. So it'll be the new screens for there. The, the teachers, laptop, desktops, the, the, um, for the administration, for the servers, all that other stuff combined. And this is actually a lowball number. It doesn't even get us um, to, to like ideal perfect state, one-to-one -one relationship. But this is what we need to get to a cycle, a routine cycle, so we don't have these huge waves. We have a spreadsheet. Hold it until you're up in front of the microphone, and then you have to say who you are, please. <coughs> Wendy Curry, we're a school board. I, what I hear you asking is, that's a big chunk of money. What are we actually talking about with logistics? We have a full spreadsheet that could describe to you what those pieces are to help you have this conversation. We can get that. We for need you. those pieces. That would please. be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? I just have a question. Uh, the state assessments and so forth, are those all computer based now and do they use the Chromebooks for those? They do. So a child needs a, a Chromebook in order to do the state testing? Yes. No. And, and Is that really correct, Tom? I, thought I don't that know. That's state, why I'm asking. I thought the state had options for school districts that did not have Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. They did I initially and they I think at this point uh, it's phased out it's and so there's um, no way for a student at a school that doesn't have computers or Chromebooks to take the state assessment. What we do now is the sixth grade takes it, like we, we spread it out Stay so right. that we can share resources. <coughs> um, so it's not, you know, they don't mandate a one-to-one, -one, but there is an expectation that there's enough for so the no testing. So child can take these tests without a but, computer. But they are all right. Even homeschool children. Yeah. Homeschool yeah. students don't take the oh, exam. Okay. Yeah. Can I just, uh, sure. re just real quick. So. Right now, it's not a one Chromebook per student. There are you know, they're sharing resources. You'd like to get to the point where each student has their own Chromebook that will last them for five years. After that point, then they get replaced. Yes. And we're also talking about the other infrastructure components to go with. So it's not, so it's not just replacing Chromebook, but it's replacing. This would be a one fifth of your total uh, replacement. technology replacement fund is really is, is the better way to describe it. Do Chromebooks that. take the place of textbooks? Um, not entirely, but they 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 do supplement the thank you. Um, they do supplement the. Uh, we have a lot of programs that have an online component to it. So when but the, is the this so I understand yes. because I don't have kids. When I was a child, my parents had to buy my textbooks. The parents don't buy the Chromebooks. We had to buy our textbooks in school. This does not happen now. No, parents don't buy textbooks either. Okay. Um, you private school? Public. Never, never heard of it. <laughs> no, it's in Wisconsin, and we bought, my parents bought our textbooks in school when we were in public school. No, no, we've always had them. We won't ask what year that was. <laughs> <laughs> Younger than you. <laughs> so, so the line is computer replacement equipment, and, and to your point, it is a broader line. When I said Chromebooks, that Matt? was too simple. Okay, and it's under property. Yes. Yeah. So for clarification, um, you're saying if we take that 127,000 multiply by five, it's 635,000. You're saying that doesn't even, like if you were to replace all of your technology all in one fell swoop, that wouldn't cover it. Right. And we would, but we wouldn't want to do it in one fell swoop. No, I'm not saying you would. I'm just trying to get a feel for like the total value of the fleet of technology, and this wouldn't. Well, and s you cover right, it. right, right. Because the last three years we have had technology on the line, and we you have paid for it every year. So, in the great scheme of things, you were buying servers and those things because we had many discussions at the school board level. So I'd like to know all those servers and things, gadgets and gadgets that you said are those other parts that are not computers and are not uh, Chromebooks, I'd like to know the percentage that we have replaced and what we have left because mm -hmm. those do have and longer can, life cycles. They do, and we do have that in, in much the way Zach was talking about the, uh, the building maintenance plan. Uh, I there would like to see those, please. Okay, we can share those. Thank you. Um, Neil. Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. Um, just, just so I'm clear on this, you're saying that this really isn't appropriate 
for a, an expendable trust fund or taking out of one-time money because this is almost, in today's terms, like buying pencils. It's got to be done. You do it every single year. You may get by fewer or more depending on what you can afford and what the needs are, but basically it's not a capital item as we traditionally think of capital items. Right. Thank you. And these are necessary for them to do their tests and become do well so that their test scores are good. We have integrated technology pretty thoroughly into uh, what we do, and so yes. Okay. It's not even. I, I just want to elaborate. It's not even test schoolers. It's basically like making them so that they know how to use technology because so much is technology, and if we don't start teaching them young, they're gonna go out into the world <coughs> and they're not gonna be able to get a job and they're not going to be contributing members of society and they're not going to be able to pay their taxes. Can it's we, the whole can, education. Can we do not have this discussion now because I, know. I have a com very different point of view. I I know. Know. But let's not do it now. That's a mm. good point. Yes, Neil. One of the things that um, I heard when I attended some of the school uh, district meetings was that um, our test scores were quite poor. Mm -hmm. And the board was very concerned about that and wanted to do something about that. I know that's not directly related to uh, this committee's work, but to some extent, one of the points of having a public education system is to educate the children and educate them well, and that is one of the reasons why we spend money. Uh, I wonder if, not tonight, but if you could provide the, the committee with a history of our test scores uh, over, let's say, the past five or ten years so we get some sort of a trend. And what the board ha is or has done to address these, these issues. Because if you're going to spend $15 million, <coughs> it's nice to know what you're getting for your money. Right. Yes. That's and, and this is only one measure of it, but it is an important measure. It is an important measure, and there are a lot of factors that go into it. Um, yeah, just a question. It's probably going to be answered on your spreadsheet, okay. but um, in anticipation. You have variations in enrollment. So if you're doing a revolving plan, say a five-year plan, right. Um, it may vary slightly from year to year depending upon the enrollment if you're going to present. Let's say you get everybody up to speed and then when you start the replacement cycle, if there's a dip or a yes. spike, this is, is a variable figure mm -hmm. based on need. Yep, this is yeah. this year, right. Okay, thank exactly. you. Exactly. And there will be, I think a lot of it we'll know. We know when the servers are end of life. We know. Promethean boards and 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 though yeah. we know how many classrooms we have, so there there's a big chunk of it that we can predict, mm -hmm. and then and then there are there is a piece that's yeah. variable. And so recognizing that what I just outlined is a large increase, I want to reiterate that we presented this budget to the Ware School Board almost a month ago. In the meantime, Lorraine, Kathleen. Uh, the principals, we've been working to look for places that we might be able to uh, cut so that we can present next week. Um, understanding that the majority of our budget is made up of contractual obligations and that the place we're going to cut from are instructional materials and supplies for the most mm. part. Um, I am fairly confident that what I'm going to propose next week is going to be at least in $150,000 less Okay. As far as a proposal, but since it hasn't been proposed to the school board, uh, we needed to go with what we had last presented to the school board. Where in this budget are the SAU services and, and um, costs represented? Um, other purchase services. Okay. It's in the 2320s. What was that? It's in the 2320s, 2321. Okay. Page. <coughs> General administration. <coughs> Page 17. Can you designate a line, please? Uh, it is uh, district shares is uh, a total of 35. Thousand two hundred and forty seven as an increase. Ah. 
What page was that on again? 17. And what is that specifically for? That's contracting with the SAU, um, me, uh, and uh, the, the staff. Um, to? 6%. To run the SAU. Oh, okay. And where's total share? Was 35? 35 is the increase. Increase. It's a 6% increase, 6.62% increase. And what were the salary percentage increases? Were people getting 6.62% salary increases? <laughs> no, no. 2% um, to 3%. But does that include an additional position? <coughs> Because it's listed on your website. Um, I don't remember the name of the position, but it wasn't there before. Administrative something. Oh, so that's Sorry. so Lorraine is okay. the district administrator. We currently don't have an assistant superintendent. Right, right. But if you got an assistant superintendent, we would, would not have that the right one. Goal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so in this interim six months. Um, we were able to, I, I stepped up to the position, Lorraine is so here. So the, that, let's say by July 1st you have been able to hire somebody. Yes. Then there would be a wage line for assistant superintendent that we don't see in this budget. Right. Okay. It's part, it's already factored into the district shares. Oh, that it is. budget passed in, in November. Okay, so you've already got a number in your heads that this is, is in that some budget. certain, yeah. Okay, thank you. So you've taken, <laughs> just so I'm clear, you've taken Lorraine's job. I, You're the yes. new Lorraine. Congratulations. <laughs> I cannot be the new Lorraine, but <laughs> I, I am the superintendent. And Lorraine is? Me. You. Yes. Okay. Again. <laughs> so knowing that, does that mean, just because I like clarity, you have a more Lorraine type salary and Lorraine now has a Jackie salary. It's for simplicity, yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I got that. We kept it within the same Thank amount. Um, okay. What is she full time? No, no I'm a point eight. No, because what? Point eight. Huh? Not She's one. Four fifths. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <laughs> Just, if you notice, she's missing one arm. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean you, like, work 30 hours a week or something? Or? No, instead of working 80, she works 60. <laughs> I'm kicking her out on Friday. <laughs> she's been here every day. Questions? Uh, is there a new hire? Uh, or is there proposed to be a new hire? Because this, this, the proposed salaries are about, you know, maybe a position more than the default salaries. There is not. Um, so the difference between the default salary object oh, oh, okay. and um, the proposed. So I'm sorry. Yes. Is about seventy-five thousand. There is um, f to the tune of about forty thousand dollars. There is a, a substitute, a long-term substitute. We are running into trouble. Uh, we have a, a lot of people having babies, and uh, we're running into trouble having a, a certified, uh, qualified person who's able to be there, and so. The, what's in the proposed is that there's also, because they're not contractual, raises for um, support staff, custodial staff, um, non-union raises for administrators are also in the proposed, but not in the default. Right. And what did you call that group that was getting raises? Support staff? So, support everyone who is not in the union, in the contract, or the two contracts. So our custodians, our secretaries. And what percentage right. did you do that? We don't, we haven't, uh, it goes into a wage pool and that happens at the end of the year based on evaluations and. Right, but you set aside a certain amount of money. There has to be a percentage yep, in there one somewhere. to three percent. Thank you. <coughs> Go ahead. Um, could you provide for us 
the amounts of the increase, especially in salaries, but it may be in other lines, that the voters have already approved. For example, mm -hmm. we approved the teacher's contract, yep. and that included X thousands of dollars here. What I'm trying to do is to, to get numbers so I can figure out the real percentage increase that is okay I understand something that that we could control that we haven't already approved yep. and so um, it would be the difference between the default what's in the default and and what's in the proposed but it's on the salaries two hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred and eighty five dollars two hundred sixty six so two hundred and sixty six thousand of the increase of six hundred seventy five thousand is due to salary contracted salaries So the only increase is the difference, let's call it uh, roughly $400,000. That's the increase that you're proposing in this budget. Yes. In addition to that, of course, is the $146,000 saving. Yes. So the real increase is roughly four hundred, five hundred and sixty thousand. dollars 560000 Okay. Thank you. Um, and so when you're ready, I'll talk about our two Warren articles. Hmm. Anybody got more questions? Ready for the Warren articles? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come give her emotional support. I'm Lisa Johnson, the chair of the Wear School Board. Can you speak up, Lisa please? Lisa Johnson, chair of the Wear School Board. And, and so these two Warren articles go together. Uh, kind of, you'll see how they're related. Um, the first one is full day kindergarten. Um, and I'm going to give an overview of what the warrant would look like, and then I'd like to give you a little history. Um, so that it's a $350,000 warrant representing three teachers, three paraeducators, three classroom setups with renovation and a play area. And um, the state budget that passed in September, late September, included full adequacy for kindergartners, which would provide an offset of about $192,000. Now, when we write the warrant, it has to be the 350, but we're predicting you know, revenue. Additionally, we've got the $65,000 or the $64,800 for the kindergarten transportation that would go away if we had a full day program, which makes an impact of $87,800. However, you know, it's more complicated than that, uh, as we've found. So the history of the warrant uh, was a subcommittee was set up back in June of 2018 to work through the details. The board had a, a goal of providing a full day program. That warrant failed last year. The group was asked to reconvene to look at, into the topic. And since no factors had changed in August at their work session, the board said, we're going to hold off. It is still our goal to have full day kindergarten in where, but we're going to hold off a year and spend, spend some time seeing what happens and, and trying to see if we can change the situation. However, then uh, <coughs> conquered through us a few curveballs. Uh, and one of them was the transportation. So at a cost of $65,000, that seemed to us like maybe that, that was money thrown away. You, we wanted to relook at, uh, was it worth it to look at kindergarten again? Uh, we still had a space issue. Um, and uh, but so we were contemplating that. Uh, and as we're, as I'm, I'm talking about this, we're still um, facing some complications from Concord in that when there was Keno for kindergarten, and we received $1,100 if you had a, a full day kindergarten program, that went to all programs, even new programs, um, because adequacy is based on average daily uh, attendance and from the year before. And so if you're a new program, you don't have kids there all day. And, and so at this moment, and for actually three school districts who 
went into this thinking they were going to get full adequacy, three districts in New Hampshire. Um, it, right now, they aren't getting full adequacy, and so we are unsure of whether that $192,000 offset is actually going to be realized. Mm -hmm. There is legislation, um, and I was told fast-track legislation, I imagine, if there are three districts who were counting on full adequacy, to provide a startup grant for to defray and, and make up the difference between what districts were expecting if you were expecting to get the full $3,700 for your kindergartners and you're only getting $1,800, that, that would be an issue. So this is a topic we have to talk about some more um, and at, at our meeting next week. Right, because that's brand new to us. It, it really just today and just the other day, I read. Right. You just found out about that? Well, it, it's been a little bit of a moving target in that um, there aren't, uh, I did just confirm it with the state yesterday. And at our, pre at our board meeting last month, we were operating under the previous assumption in terms of the adequacy and what we would be getting. So the two years of Kino Garden, mm -hmm. as, as it's called, funding, did include money, uh, startup money and so we were operating under that same assumption and because it's not um, there aren't a lot of schools dealing with uh, you 95% know, of New Hampshire towns do have full day programs there were they weren't advertising that far and wide and so we were we did I did figure that out and uh, here we are that 192,000 that we have not got a handle on. Yes. Is that a one-time cost? It's one-time fund. I mean, it's not one-time funds. It'd be part of kindergarten is now part of full adequacy. So from here on out, every year you're going to get 192,000. Yes. Yeah, we're going to get 3,700. Sure uh, well, yes. I, I mean, you'll have to ask the. Okay. The, the first year is the problem year. It's a transition year, mm -hmm. and because adequacy is based on your prior years student numbers if you didn't have if you had zero in the prior year for full you day kindergarten you have a problem you've got a problem yes so so just go ahead are the sums in this proposed Sorry. article okay. for July to July a full year f uh, funding for the teachers yes okay it, 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 right it's for 3 it three teachers, three paras, and three classroom setups. Um, a classroom, three classroom setups to be determined, or do you have a place in it's mind? Where middle school is what the board decided would be the location of the preschool. Now, is well, there a strategic plan that looks down the road so we don't run out of space for the middle school kids? Funny you should ask, because that <laughs> that's the next Warren article. Right. Oh. And that's what I mean about them going together. Um, this did bring up an issue that um, we have space needs and, and um, we're, we're going to continue to have space needs and, and so uh, we had a committee get together, we brought it to the board and what came out of the board meeting, the last board meeting was to move forward with a Warren article setting aside $75,000 for architectural and site planning a year-long process to for an early learning center that would address some of those long-term oh needs. My God. Tom, you want to say something? Yeah, I was wondering if you've considered uh, for that first year, <coughs> since that first year will actually be a one-time expense, mm -hmm. because after that you'll pick up the full funding, and and in October you get a one-time shot at money from the state, is that correct? Coming next October? Mm -hmm. So the, the have you considered taking the difference uh, for that kindergarten for the first year right. out of that pot of money and applying it so that in fact you come out even like you're explaining here? Right, and so when we talk about the warrant, um, you, it would be a $350,000 warrant and we'd talk about the offsets, and we'd have to decrease our revenue predictions unless something happens in the legislature and it passes and, and we get the full adequacy. But we could talk about it in terms of 
offsetting it with the one-time funds. If, if that's what the board decides right. next week. Mm -hmm. that it just seems do. like that's a but good match because the time is right. It's a one time. Mm -hmm. But if you did that, you'd have to get voter approval to spend that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take the money yes. from the one-time pot and put it into mm -hmm. this purpose. No. 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 Just money. And here's what they want. Because we haven't put it in a trust or anything, unlike the... Just money. Just one-time money. I thought in order to spend money, it had to be appropriated. If we get, so that's why be. our warrant is going to be a $350,000 warrant. If our revenues come in less than we're expecting, um, because the adequacy for kindergartners is not fully funded, we have to take that from somewhere. So if the $350,000 passes as a warrant article, the voters have approved the spending of that money. So I guess I have a question then on Neil's. So I understand this eight hundred thousand dollars that you're going to get. Anything that you decide to use it, like say you decide to put it towards this early learning center, do you then have to get the town's the voters' approval to spend it, or it's basically the school's money to do with what they what they feel necessary? No money is ever. Does that make sense? <coughs> Adequacy, um, you need to come up to the microphone, please. I'm not talking about the adequacy. I'm talking about that extra money, the one-time money from the state. Once it's a warrant <laughs> article, as they're proposing it, seventy-five thousand dollars. That's what you're talking about. I no, well, I was I was talking about more of like if they use that eight hundred thousand to actually build the building. If it wasn't, a, it if it hadn't to, been voted on yet, it has to be voted on. It, it has, has to be voted. That's yeah. what. That's my question. I just want to understand. It has to. So if you decide that you want to <laughs> use this money for computers, yes, for five hundred thousand dollars for computers next year, we would have a warrant article saying or, we want to use this money for the computers. Or they put in the budget. Yes. That's, I know, that's what I'm, I'm just asking. I want to clarify from my own mind that the money has to be so, in some way approved by the voters to use yes. it the way the school wants to use it. Yes. Okay, that's Everything all. Everything has to be. No, I just. I do think there's an issue with the, with the one time, what we're calling one time money. When we get our estimates from Concord on what our actual adequacy is going to be, it's one lump sum for each district. And so that number is going to be used on your revenues for your budget, regardless of how you, how you think you want to spend the one-time money. So all these warrant articles are going to be included in that overall revenue. So I think that may clear up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Uh -huh. but, mm. Your adequacy, the state tells us what to expect for adequacy. Mm -hmm. When you see the revenue page, you're going to see the adequacy amount, and you're going to see it's almost it's 700 and something more for this this budget coming than the current year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it goes all into one big one big lump of money, and how we spend it is your budget and your warrant articles. But just go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I think I'm going back to a point that Neil made earlier with John Stark District, and that is if that goes in just in the general revenue pot, then it ends up reducing taxes, and it's, it's a, a one-time reduction that has to be made up the next year. So if, if you say, if, if you at least on paper, even though it comes in from the state in one pot, uh, if you divide it for the purposes of your own budgeting so that the one-time money goes toward a one-time expense, like the upstart or the kindergarten or something, and that's defined on paper, then it doesn't leave that anticipation in future years that the tax rate is going to be lower than what it's really going to be. And I, I understand that, but I think I, I just wanted to clarify that when we, when we actually do the calculation for your tax rate for next year, it's going to include all the revenue, including all of the extra adequacy money we yeah. can't we can't split that out specifically so, Neil you, you can split it out the yeah. state will split it out for you and tell you how much of that we, pot we, is is adequacy money and how much of that pot is one-time money and we have my, that information Neil what but what I I'm know you're going to give it to us right but what I'm telling you is that you typically after the after the public hearing you'll have that revenue sheet that I usually give you and you always have a number for adequacy, and it's always in to it's 
the total amount of adequacy that we're going to receive. We can't split it up specifically on the <coughs> revenue side to do you, what you want to do. You, you'd better split it up because there will be hell to pay if you don't. Um, uh, but, but let, me, let me ask the question. Um, are you folks proposing a warrant article that will take, I'm making up the numbers, assuming you're getting 800000 and 250000 is for adequacy and 550000 is the one-time money? 800 is the one-time money. Eight times one. Then you're, are you going to propose a warrant article to put the $800,000 into an expendable trust fund? No. Why not? If you don't do that, no. will that money not result in an enormous tax decrease next year? Yes, it will. Mm -hmm. The school board and the school board will lose that money, and that was mm -hmm. not the purpose of giving this money to reduce taxes. I know this is something that you may not <laughs> want to hear me say, but that was not the purpose of that no, money. I'm, I'm glad we recorded that. But it's a valid financial <laughs> question, absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm, urging, I'm urging the school board to put an a warrant article in in the amount of $800,000 into an expendable trust fund or some kind of a trust fund. Now, because of, because of what you heard in the Stark meeting, if you do that and there are no commitments on the part of the board as to what that money is to be used for, mm -hmm. and you folks can spend it on your own after a public hearing without regard to what the public may have to say, that's a real problem. Yep. Yes. Yeah, that one passed. And, and if it doesn't pass, you're going to get the spike. Right. And you're going to lose that money. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the same thing I was saying. Yeah. Keith, yeah. no, and I understand. I understand that, Tom. But what I was just trying to say is, when we put everything together, and when we're say in October, when we're getting ready to set the tax rate, all of the revenues go in one big pot. In adequacy, that adequacy number will be part of that one big pot of part of pot of numbers. So we've, revenue. we've got the the taxpayer and, and what what is the, the yeah. public piece and then the part we need to do behind the yeah. scenes but as far as But if you, in fact, sure. take that 800000 yes, and spend it, whether it's on kindergarten, yeah. whether it's on computers, whether it's on something, you spend it, then you're going to improve the educational status of the district. That's not going to change what she's saying. But but, right. but it will in a sense. Yeah, what Neil said: spend it by putting yeah. it into a trust fund or something. Yeah, but if you could do that, providing it was worded in an appropriate mm -hmm. way so that everybody would see this transparency and so forth. But also, if you have the needs and they're one-time needs, and you put them in this year and spend it, what you don't want to happen is for it to go back as a tax offset, and then all of a sudden this year the tax rate goes down by 50 cents, we'll say, and next year, ooh, wow, now we've got a three times the increase on paper that what it really is. So it just somehow it has to be used in such a way so that you don't get that uh, tax relief one year and an enormous spike the next year where nobody will ever pass your budget. You'll get default budgets forever if you did that. I find it interesting. We listened to where? John Stark. Mm -hmm. And you did the presentation. The thought process for John Stark is handling the money in the best way possible to protect it. No, they haven't thought about it all either. No, they haven't thought no. about it. No, but they're, 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 they're talking already, about putting it in that no, expendable they trust. They've got another 400 coming from where plus whatever comes from Hanukkah. Yeah, they were talking about right. it. So they have the same issue. And this is one of the things that honestly, I, we probably should get into it right now, but it's. I find it frustrating that they haven't been looking at this. Yes, because you're coming to us to talk about budgets and finances. And this committee is to look at you and say, is this the best thing to do? But you have not done a lot of your homework in thinking about this money. And it, me personally, and sitting on this committee, I'm concerned with what's being presented because a lot of thought has not gone into all these ramifications that every one of these people is asking. Can Go ahead, Neil. Let's assume the first article passes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long can you maintain that kindergarten without, and, and let's assume warrant article two fails mm -hmm. because everybody says, hey, it's another building and all that stuff. Right. 
how long can you continue full day kindergarten in the, under the current circumstances, the current population, and the current building structure? But, I mean, there are a lot of variables to that, depending on population, depending on... Um, you got a trend of level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I suppose we could keep the preschool at where middle school forever. forever. Mm -hmm. And then why do you want the second article? What's the rationale if, yep. you, if, if your program for full-day kindergarten works with the current population and the current buildings, why before the population rises, mm -hmm. are you putting in an article for a new building? Right. I think trying to, uh, I'm not sure that's a solution everyone's <coughs> happy with. Uh, it's a temporary solution. I, I think a lot of people saw it as a temporary solution. Um, if we did have, if we did <coughs> offer a full day program next year, um, that it's not ideal. Uh, well, in, but we in, could make it work. In regards to that, I would assume that you're taking a usable space away from some kind of curriculum activities in the middle school to facilitate this kindergarten and that there would be a continuing need for that space in the middle school curriculum that would not be met if we didn't move the kids out at some point in the future. So what you're saying is that this is to facilitate the kindergarten now, but this wasn't what you intended to do down the road. Because it's also affecting the usage of the building at Center Woods right. yes. and taking away things from, from yes. not taking away, but mm -hmm. making it not ideal situations for certain things for the kids at Center Woods as well as the middle school. Right. Because but, the art and music program. Could you explain that to us, the <coughs> art and music? Well, maybe what we need to do is let them actually address the second article so we all know <coughs> what the driver this, is. This here. is the first article. Right, but yes, now we're talking about them building and that's the second article. Right, but they haven't fully described the kindergarten program yet. What are we what are we losing as a result of mm -hmm. going into a kindergarten program before we have adequate space for it? Um we are art and we're losing the art and music space or space. Yeah. Not art and music classes, but you would have the art and music on cart, so they would be going to the classrooms instead of having a dedicated art and music room. Five years ago, that was a real issue, and we had to make sure that we had art and music rooms because we didn't want them on carts. Mm -hmm. And now we think it's okay to take them away. No, no, which no, is but why. But you're going to. Yeah. And I think that was part of it. Again, when we before the mandate for the mid the uh, kindergarten transportation came down, that's why we were sort of waiting on. We need. We didn't want to push forward with, with the full day kindergarten this year because we were looking at sort of all of those facets. It was sort of a catalyst when the, the legislation came through mandating that kindergarten transportation. We knew we were going to have an increase, another $65,000 that we were going to be spending for buses. And that did kind of force our hand a little bit to say, Sh is this something that we should be looking at now? And then taking a look at some of the adequacy money that we thought we would be getting to offset that. Tom first, then Neil. Yeah, I think that, that the division between the decisions that this board makes and <coughs> what decisions this school board makes are two different things and the programming decisions the decisions to at least temporarily uh, reassign the use of space in the building is a school board decision not a finance committee decision so if they feel that they that that is a good move in order to incorporate this full day kindergarten program then that's a decision that, that that's theirs to make now, the second part of that is where they're saying that, you know, we're not crazy about this decision. We believe it's the best at the time. So for the future, we want to do this. And that's where the next warrant article comes in. So that you have a situation that works, but you're not completely approved, uh, crazy about it. So in order to improve on that, you're going to this second warrant article. But what I'm saying, two things. First what I've already said here, <laughs> but also just going back for a minute, I don't think we should get into making uh, decisions that the school board should be making, and that is the use of space within the building uh, and the appropriateness of it is a school board decision, not a finance committee decision. But I'm going to opinion. raise a question about that because I sat on the finance committee when we had to move the fourth grade up because we wanted to make sure that we had 
the rooms for music and art. It was a funding issue. We needed money because we needed to move the fourth grade so we could keep this. This came into the budget. It was a budget question. Mm -hmm. So it is still a budget question. Mm -hmm. And while I hear that busing came up, we all know that busing came up, mm -hmm. What I'm not seeing, what I'm not hearing, I don't see architectural plans, I don't see hard costs. I do not understand why I'm forcing all day kindergarten when I do not have hard plans, when for $65,000 I can pay for busing for a year instead of going through and putting in insurance, teachers, pensions, paras, changing out classrooms, building playgrounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, this is, I get where you want to go, mm -hmm. but you don't build a house halfway and run around with an umbrella in one of the rooms because you didn't put the roof on. You take your time and you say, this is where we'd like to go, but right now, this is the best option. Stay where we are, cover the busing. That covers all your issues, and we can very nicely take time to plan and show that we've got a hardcore plan with hardcore numbers, that we aren't moving children from here to here to here, changing classrooms, changing bathrooms, changing playgrounds, and oh hey, now let's build another building and move them again. That's very disruptive to children's lives. And from what I saw in the fourth grade, when the fourth grade moved up to the middle school, it was disruptive to the parents' lives. So from a finance perspective, I would like to see a much more reasonable, thought out plan. Give yourself a year, handle the busing, and then talk to me about this because I find that this is a very knee-jerk production. And so, so that second Warren article is your article then um, because that's what that is proposing, um, that we spend the year investigating a way to address the space needs. <coughs> Can I also just say something about why we, were, we, we went ahead and, and said we wanted to put forward the article about kindergarten? Um, because we did sort of go around and have that discussion. Should we wait another year? They've been talking about full-day kindergarten. This committee's been going on for a couple years now, so um, there definitely has been a lot of talk about ways to do it, and I definitely hear your points, Lori. Um, the thing that we did come back to also is next year we're going to have another teacher's contract. The year after that, we're going to have another support staff contract. So we're going to have some big ticket items coming up over the next few years. So feeling that this was a year when, you know, obviously kindergarten is a big ticket item, some of the things that we're asking for, the technology big ticket items, but feeling that if we are waiting and trying to do it again next year when we also have a teacher's contract that we're trying to do, we do end up, we have to sort of balance this. You can't spend all of your money in one year. So trying to figure out how can we kind of be, um, look out for what we really have as a view for the for the kids in where, um, but also try to balance it out without trying to say we're going to ask for 10 things all at once. We talked about that last year where we had two contracts and kindergarten. It was too much. So that was another piece that came into that discussion. Neil? Um, I'm trying to understand how this is going to operate financially. If kindergarten passes, Article 1 passes, and Article 2 fails, you're prepared, I think you said, to live with this forever. I mean, for you the might near, come back for, yeah, with yeah, it yeah. in yeah. another year, but this is, again. Yes. It, it, that's a better situation than the current situation that we have. And you've explained all of the cost offsets to that. Um, what happens if Article 1 fails? fails? because a lot of the parents don't want to lose out on classroom art and classroom music and their kids are already beyond the kindergarten age. Mm -hmm. um, and Article 2 passes. Is, is that an acceptable solution or a, an acceptable situation for the board? And you you would then have planning money. Yeah, yeah, we'd have planning money. We wouldn't have the, the full day kindergarten, but we'd have the money to be looking at what are some of the options. Thank you. I, I got to respectfully disagree with you <laughs> because, again, I go back to these things that we're talking about are, in my mind, are school board decisions and that the financial piece, of course, comes to, to us. But as far as whether or not making the decision of whether or not for uh, 
the immediate future in a K through three school is art on the cart and music on the cart, an okay situation until we can do something different. That's a school board decision, and I don't think it should be what... Uh, but they're asking us to pay $87,000 for that. Isn't that a finance decision? Mm -hmm. The $87,000 is, yes. 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 And what we're getting for $87,000 is full-day kindergarten, but what we're also losing for $87,000 is art in the classroom and music yeah. in the classroom. Well, now, I'm, now I'm kind of branching over into the school board territory when I say... <laughs> we're, See, we're, it depends. We're talking about uh, you know, primary grades. So we're talking about an art program in the primary grades. It's not like a middle school or a high school art program where the, that the, the setting is far more important because of the variety of art. You're doing the finance bit, Tom. You're saying that it is worth it. No, I'm not. I'm saying just the opposite. I'm saying that art on the cart works better in grades K through 3 than it would in uh, middle school or high school where there's a different concept of it. All and together. therefore it's worth the 87000 Yes. But I think that, I'm sorry to interject, I disagree no, with that point, that, but I think that, for once that I agree with Laurie, that we're spending 87000 <laughs> not to say once, but you know, in the same way. <laughs> we're, so we're, we're, we're spending we'll 87000 take your first answer only, that's it, sorry. To, and then we spend, say both of our approval, we're spending $87,000 for full day kindergarten, we spend $75,000, and we're like, we're going to build this special education, this early learning center. And then we've spent this $85,000 to change these classrooms and to change the bathrooms and all these things. And then we're moving the kids to this early learning center, say, best case scenario, that, that would be great for our town, in, like, theory. Um, I'm just saying that. I know somebody's going to say money-wise. So, um, but then we spent $87,000, or really more than that. We've spent $300,000, but eighty-seven dollars that we're paying for out of, out of our pocket and that we're seeing in our taxes – but then we have all these things that we've done that we have to change back and we have to spend money. That's, that's where, in my head, I'm like, it's like you fix up your home for, like, the, the in-laws or, like, you put a, like, we were looking at putting a bathroom in the basement and they're like, you're not going to get your return on the investment mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Like, we're spending $87,000, but are we not going to use it in the end? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it, I think that's a, it's a good point. Um, primarily that is uh, staffing costs. Uh, the bulk of that $350,000 is the, the, the three teachers, the three paraeducators. Um, we also, classroom setups, that all goes along. Those are chairs and, and the, we can move those where we need to. Do you have a budget? $60,000 would be no, the no, classroom. No, no, you have a budget that, that lists all of these things for the kindergarten that yes. you can give us so that uh, Megan can Me see. Megan. <laughs> that I only get the cost for the playground. <laughs> the cost how, much the play, the how much is the playground? The how much are the teachers? And then what's going to happen when you move to redo the bathroom? Yes, that's you the, yes. that back again. Yes, we have that. Yeah. I, and I think the the playground might be the only piece um, that would not be portable. I don't think the bathroom renovations are anything. Um, we put in a, a a stool like a. But we just <laughs> but need to a, see it. With yeah. a dollar. Yep, sign. and we've shared that with the board a number of times. So, so. to clarify that, you're not physically um, changing the the building itself. No. 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 Mm. Okay. What are you doing to the bathrooms? I I, I just, the, 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 just stools. That yeah, go around the toilet. So not not the step stools you'd have at your house because kids could there are school approved ones but we're not we're not talking and seats so they don't fall right, right. <laughs> yeah. no plumbing work no plumbing work no okay just have a quick question on on the full day kindergarten is that going to be the only option or are you still going to be able to op offer half day for 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 people that want that um, I, we had gone into and actually we we just did this in Hanukkah and we offered the half day um, piece and, and that was an option for people who wanted it and it worked out fine. And are we still going to have to provide busing for that half day? No, because it's a full day program and so if you were doing something special within that, uh, parents would be responsible. Okay. I, I just don't know what your big picture idea is for the money. Because in your case, it's a lot of money, more so than it is in the case of Starry. Um, are you 
going to have an answer by next, when you do this public hearing, yes. next week? Yes, we are. So all of this we just talked about could be out the window. I don't I don't think anything that we've talked about is off the, out the window. Well, I mean, for instance, if you, if, you, if you feel that Megan is and Lori are on the right track, you might say to yourself, if we can put that bundle of money into a fund to, to capture it and then have this next year to actually plan out the whole package and mm -hmm. and have that pile of money there to do the whole thing with including a new building i imagine we'd need to have two different funds we'd still have i mean two different yes we'd need to have the warren article and then a second warren article that that went to space <coughs> needs um center woods reconfiguration or early learning and and putting the funds there. right but there's without you know, speaking that's, to the board or that's just writing <laughs> right i'm not i can't realize you can't make these decisions now but i'm just pointing out to you that this is the kind of thing that i thought you would have been thinking about sooner because really what you want to do is capture that money and then figure out how to spend it as opposed to you know i don't know what you're doing sorry i haven't really had time staying quiet so i i do want to make it clear that we have been thinking about it we we met in december i was there right yep so we knew that it was an issue. We haven't, we've been talking about what we're going to do. We haven't, because we haven't voted on it, we can't say this is what we're doing. Right, but, but December so things, to plan plan next week, a month time. I, I, I don't think that, I mean, I, ju I already told you a lot of the, we're, I'm going to propose some cuts to. No, but week. no, to but, your point, mm -hmm. I believe we have to vote on something next week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, but you're coming to us, presenting to us with a game plan that is not even <coughs> half done. You don't have any facts or figures, and you've only been talking you, to your own admission. You've been addressing this since December. We went through this last year, and we all said we wanted to see a very long, mm -hmm. concise, mm -hmm. organized plan. Mm -hmm. But here we are mm -hmm. again. I hear your needs. I understand that you have directions you'd like to go in. Mm -hmm. But I want a house, but I just can't go sit on the land and say, trees, build me a house. You have to have building blocks, and yes. I'm not seeing them. Yes. So I'm sorry, I was not clear. I was um, re approaching Neil's yeah. concern that we That's don't. Keith. Keith, sorry, Keith's <laughs> point that we don't have the new Neil, right? That's worse, Megan. <laughs> I, I, was, I was talking specifically about this 800,000 bubble that we're going to get next year that we don't have um, so, something that we're going to talk about that's independent of kindergarten because. Yeah. Well, it could be. It could it not could be. be right? right. So I. But we absolutely have to have that decision next week. Um, that's. Yeah. Kindergarten, to your point, is a whole. But that's what this is all about. Sh sure. Sorry, I just jumped up to specifically talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks for coming. No, <laughs> there are these two issues that may or may not be related. If we go to that $800,000, talk about that for a minute, mm -hmm. I think it would be important for the board to say, okay, we've got these $800,000. We want to put it all into one-time expenses. These are the expenses we're going to put it into mm -hmm. so that it goes to actually improving the district, but not just all of a sudden the tax rate plunges and then next year it's back up again. Uh, so I think that that's a separate issue, but it could overlap this if some of it is used toward this. But I think that has to be done mm -hmm. so that you don't lose that money uh, and, you know, then be grasping for something else like computers or whatever when it could have been invested. And we did uh, talk, I'm sorry. Go yeah. ahead. And then the other part, going back to the kindergarten again, uh, you know, I, I, th I think you are far ahead of where you were last year. Mm -hmm. Last year, the sticking point for me was that you had these preschoolers <coughs> who might go to the high school, they might go to the middle school, you didn't know what you, for sure, and you, you were asking people to trust and we'll make the decision later. I see this plan as, as for much further along than what it was last year, and so I disagree with some of my fellow team members here. <laughs> uh, Shocking. Can I ask? Can I ask a question? Um, 
I am wondering, um, my sense is next year at this time, just like we talked about with Stark, we could come propose funding mm -hmm. in the unreserved fund. Mm -hmm. Say that again? We, this year, just like for this year, we're asking at Stark for $200,000 for, um, an ex I'm sorry, an expendable trust funding. We could come next year. Oh, not unless you yeah. put it into your budget. Right. Yeah. You gotta be put budget it into surplus. Budget or put it into Where a The $200,000 is no, coming from. put it into the budget now. So you have the surplus next year. Yeah. The, the two, okay. yes. But this year. I'm not coming this year. We're talking about next year. Okay. I'll have to exp yeah. think through how I want to explain it. What, what when is the last so date that the school board can have a warrant article added or an article added to the warrant? We were just looking that up. <laughs> same as the town, isn't it? it was the same, right? Jan January fifteenth, right? While, she, while she's looking that up, can I just say a couple of things I just wanted to respond. Number one, I wanted to say that we definitely have talked about that one time money, we kept, keep up with the one time <coughs> money and how do we use it. And we, we started kind of going through what are some things we could do. I think, again, back to this fear of if we try to say we're going to use this chunk of money and replace all of this technology at once, that sounds great. We can we could use that, but then we would end up in that situation where the next you know five years from now now we're like we have to do it again. So we wanted to be thoughtful. So we did talk about some different ways to use the one-time money. Um, I can't believe we're standing here going, well, my gosh, what are we going to do with eight hundred thousand dollars? <coughs> but um, that's but what I I'm think trying to point out to you. This is right. the, the problem we had at our meeting that you invited yep. me to, but you never had let me talk to you. So I couldn't express these thoughts there. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is capture that money. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily spend it, capture it. And that's going to involve you talking to, I assume, people to state mm -hmm. to understand what you can, what you're allowed to do legally in terms of methods of capturing it so you could subsequently use it. And I think that will make your whole life easier, so much easier. Where I get concerned, and then I'll let you talk, he's giving you good points. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Tom is. Everybody on the board is actually giving you good points. But from our perspective, you're presenting to us wanting money and you want to do this stuff. This was your job. Mm -hmm. And we're telling you, suggesting to you what you should be looking at, where you should have been looking at. Mm -hmm. And that isn't our job to do your job. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I have no confidence. Mm -hmm. I want to see more future planning, thoughtfulness, there, for me, and it's all coming from here, you haven't thought this out. You have not addressed that issue. You haven't thought what Tom suggested. There are variables, but they're not organized. And we're can, giving you a lot of input on that. Can I clarify, like, so what we're talking about, we, we need to mm -hmm. deal with mm -hmm. um, the seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars that Keith was That's talking about. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, and I'll take full responsibility for that piece, aside from that, the rest of what we, I mean, we built a thoughtful budget and I think have gone through our needs. Do you have concerns aside from that? No, it's these warrant it's this articles one piece that which we need to absolutely address. Okay. These are where you're Okay. But I don't I want to make well, sure I'm focused it's fine. on your concerns. Just and I understand it's a big no, I do, but just It's, to, it's to fine. To He's point. asking yeah. a specific mind, question to come up here. About the cut that it's fine. Next week. So we really don't even have your actual budget. And this right. goes back right. to the meeting we had in December right. when you Neil when you guys talked about all these numbers and I was surprised. You have to discuss this in public. Come see us in January. And are you going to tell us about that? Well, the answer is obviously no. You weren't going to tell us about that because you had to talk to the board. Okay, stop it right now. Keith, everybody, we're going to get something straight right now. The person that runs these meetings is me. And I have said that we are not going to have anybody in the audience drive traffic on this. I am aware that we have certain members that do certain things. We all know that Neil has certain wheelhouses because of his events in the State House that he asks. I would prefer, and I will ask the committee to weigh in, if Neil has a question that he wants to talk with Lorraine, A, one, we do it all here, or he can call her later, and no, you don't have to call anybody else to say that you're talking to her. That's not part of how this group works. And B, 
we have to be respectful of everybody who talks in this room. So if Keith is having a discussion at the podium, nobody else is having discussions that are disrupting anything. It, I apologize for that. I should not have been talking to Lorraine. And I would appreciate on. it if everybody will just step it down a little bit. That includes me. I'll own that. And let's take this a little bit lighter. And I'm sorry to have interrupted you, Keith, but I want this on a much smoother, even keel with no interruptions anywhere. And if there is a question, as I did just now, I will weigh in. I'm more than capable of that. So, Keith, would you like no, to I'm go good, back? I'm and I'm going to be bad. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. It's Jeff. It's all right. No, no, the no, young Lisa. lady in the <laughs> Lisa. Lisa. Lisa okay. Johnson. Jeff, I do know you because we <laughs> talked a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. are you good with what you were talking to Neil about? Okay. Jeff, you wanted to say about? You mean the new Neil? The new Neil? Which one do you want to be? Are you Neil too? Or Neil? How is Keith? <laughs> I do wonder if next year, as we think about timing, we make sure we have this discussion after we've met with the board. That would that would have resolved a number of these things. When you say met with, the, I'm getting there, Jeff. That we've had our January board. <coughs> okay. Part of the problem is timing. Yes, so oh, absolutely. I understand, we all understand the schools operate on a different timeline. But we cannot sit and wait until you decide to get with the board in another week and a half. We have decisions we have to make. So there has to be, the town, we used to have problems like that with the town. And the town and this committee had a discussion and they have worked beautifully with us to try and get things done on a more timely basis. John Stark has done a great job working with us on that. This, if we're going to work and make this a good cohesive team, we have got to work on the timing of the meetings. And so far, the meetings are running at your behest. I had to call for the meetings. We know that you need to come see us. This discussion we're way too close to what's coming up for the public, for all of us. Mm -hmm. And these discussions need to be done earlier. You know when these things are coming, and I'm not attacking, I'm merely stating, we all know when those timelines are. And yes, you want to have your meetings when you do, but when we go into this, these sessions, we bump our meetings up, John Stark will do something for us. If we say, hey, we don't get it, Zach is like, when do you need to see me again? Mm -hmm. We need to have more flexibility with you, more um, a better way of meeting than just the workshop, and it needs to be earlier because it ends up in the snafu every year. It's not just because of me. It's anybody who's ever been on this committee and in your group. We all go, oh, my God, here we are again. <laughs> and it's not a good way to do business. Yep. And I think we'd all like a much pleasanter, more relaxed, and this is not the best time to have these discussions. Mm -hmm. It's unfortunate we have to wait until a workshop. If we could find a better way, John Stark lets us ask questions mm -hmm. during the meetings. And I know you have a lot of traffic, but we have to got to find a better way for all of us to do this better for everybody. Mm -hmm. And if we could have some help with you, we'd love to work with you to get this better because this is a late time for all of us to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Jeff. That's all right. One thing I just wanted to bring up is, as new Neil said and brought up, um, <laughs> is that Jeff? Is that <laughs> we failed about going for, uh, from, instead of going A to Z, we stopped at about T. One thing we've already done on the facilities committee, and Kathleen has it, is a full CIP plan as far as capital improvement projects, plus also major improvement, not quite the capital level that we foresee meeting at both the Ware Middle School and at the Santa Woods Elementary School. Okay. The one thing we did fail on <coughs> is not realizing to go with that last step to say, hey, we can use either, because we have more money than um, in that CIP plan over the next 10 plus years that's listed than even that 800,000. So we do have a plan listed. It's in Excel format. We can send over if it's all right with you guys. Um, to, to you folks, listing out what <coughs> some of the items <coughs> excuse me, what the items we have listed over the for foreseeable 10-year um, horizon, that based upon your input, sounds really good that we could put 
all of that planning and similar to like um, what was mentioned for Stark, that it's, it's kind of tied together with the CIP major improvement, which we already have. We just didn't tie that last piece together, which is a good, good point. So we can do all that. We can bring up at, at our meeting, if it's all right with you, and then we can uh, send over that paperwork to like tie all that money in. And that would be great because like John Stark is saying, you know, we've got these plans and, you know, we're going to, as we said, we need more information. Could you give this to us? Mm -hmm. The more you give to us, yeah, you're going to get questions. You're like, oh, God, here they go again. But on the other hand, the more information we have, the more we feel like you, you really want us to be part of the team mm -hmm. and you want us all to understand and ask questions because the people that are out there, they have a lot of questions, but they're not going to come to us. They're not going to come to you. They're going <coughs> to do what they do best, which is either yes, no, or mm. And we really want a much more smoother, pleasanter situation. And so the more you can give us, the more we can work together, and the sooner we do it, it would work so much better for all of us. So let me know what I can do to make this work better for you and vice versa, because that's what we really need to do. Dennis, did you have anything you wanted to say before I change you to Neil or Keith again? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? It was else? well put. <laughs> Did we ever get to the second word? <laughs> I think we got to everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then some. Neil. Uh, yeah, I heard a, a rumor that um, the second warrant article was going to include not just kindergarten space, but also an office for the SAU. Would you care to comment? Well, we are, I think as part of a year-long study, one of the things we'd look at are ways to offset the costs to the WARE taxpayers. And right now, the SAU pays rent to a private um, company, and that money doesn't go back to the WARE taxpayers. So if the SAU was paying rent to WARE school district, it would help defray the cost of any early learning center. Um, I took Economics 101. And it, my it, understanding uh -huh. is that if you're charging the school district for space, you've built the space. So unless the school district is going to pay a rent that exceeds the value of the space that uh -huh. you've built for them, there is no benefit to the where taxpayer. So, so right, we have the only town. But it's still a building it's still, this town is going to have to right. We don't make so any money unless they pay a, an above market rate. So it may not bear out, and that's part of what we want to look at. Mm -hmm. So it was, we, we know, know we have a lease. <laughs> you're in an apartment building, economics 101? Yep. Yes. They make money. Yes, they do. But that's because the landlord gets all the rent and charges whatever the market will bear. Which is what we would but in, need. But in this case, $500,000 building. We need $100,000 worth of that building for our kindergarten. We're building $400,000 worth of that building for the SAU. Whatever the market rate is for 400000 if that's all we're getting, then uh, we're not making any money on that. The, the taxpayers aren't making any money, unless we're charging more than the market rate for that. Yeah. But we're not expending money to yeah. someone else for the office space. Yeah. Of course we are. We will still have no. to pay our share of that money. Mm -hmm. The SAU doesn't, doesn't give it a, a free. So that will be part of the study that we do. And if it doesn't bear out, um, I mean, th that will be part of the planning and we need so this is not commercial space then? You're not planning to build a building with commercial space that you're going to be renting to uh, non-academic? No. Just for the SAU? If that, if that would be something I think One we'd want to explore option. because uh, um, right now I, we, we pay money outside and I, it seems like it could be a way and maybe it's not. And Do you even know where you're looking? No, nope. that's why we need a year. Mm. Questions, comments? Well, so do Neil, you, do uh, Keith. Board meeting <laughs> between now. And <laughs> Sorry. Your public hearing. I should know that. We have a board meeting before the public hearing. Right, right. Same, that yeah, one, it's the same day. It's, but yes, that it's, one that day. Yes, okay. right. It is. But it's what day is hearing. that? It's Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Fifteenth Wednesday. We have fun. What? Where and what time? <coughs> middle school. At the where middle, middle school. At seven yeah. or six? Six. Six o'clock is the meeting. We and uh, seven the finance committee. The public hearing. Okay. Well, uh, there's also the conservation committee, so I get confused. That's next. That's tomorrow night. tomorrow night. Right. Because you already agreed that you'd meet with us. Yeah, we did. Okay. 
So you could be excused if you wanted to go to that. Yeah. <laughs> He's representing us. Well, I think that Keith, Is that myself, and Tammy would be excused. If you want to go, absolutely. Okay. I didn't hear anything that, from this little corner, though. But if the corner wants to go, I think you guys, that's your, that's the yeah, group you're like designated yes. for. That's important. And ask lots of questions. So Maybe I, they'd I be just allowed to so ask questions. This is the same date that we had set for the town to come here. Yes, is also the school meeting and public hearing. I was under the impression we were going to reschedule that at our last meeting when I explained to you that it was a conflict. That's okay. But we do have the option of changing our meetings. That's this okay. committee does have that ability to say, hey, we need to move this meeting and we can. So that is a discussion. Do you have anything else to present to us? I don't think we do. Nope. Anybody have any questions for them? Go ahead, Anna. Um, do you plan on discussing the option of, of using the expendable trust for the money? Yes. You are going to. Well, y yes. You are going to. Okay. I just wanted to see if that was something to expect yeah. to yes. hear about next week. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Madam Chair, would you like to come up, please? <laughs> Which hat are you wearing up here? I'm I'm wearing my district administrator hat in support of of Jackie. So I want to make sure that I've. <laughs> Well, all of you were talking and asked, could we have this, could we have, I, I made a list. So Thank I want to see if I've captured it all. I may not have, so if I'm missing something. Um, you would like an inventory of projects for that one-time money at John Stark and at where? Correct. You would like an inventory of our technology and where so that you can see end of life. Yes. Number of computers, number of servers, number of switches. Yes. Um, you would like to see research on the efficacy of SROs. Yes. <coughs> you would like to see a breakout of adequacy versus the one-time money for FY21. Correct. And you would like to see an itemized kindergarten budget. Yes. Did I miss anything? History of standardized test scores. Oh, that's correct. Uh -uh. It's in the back. No offense, but the public's <laughs> not allowed to wait. Yet. Well, we, we have that. Number. It's in the back, back of the binder. It's, there's five years worth of pop student population in the back of this binder. Yeah. yeah. But only five years. Could we go back ten? <laughs> we can. <laughs> I'll scan when I Is have. there any? Chris, you had some questions before. Are they you getting what answered. you need? Oh. The, the SAU questions, yeah, they've all been answered, I think. Um, yeah, they have. Matt? I don't have anything else. I'm, Gary, Gary, is it? Yeah, no, I'm good. Megan? I'm good right now. Tammy? Good, thank you very much. Tom? <coughs> Dennis? <laughs> Keneal? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Going on the premise that the date of the meeting is next Wednesday. Which meeting? For the school, yeah. Ware School, and we are supposed to be meeting with the town of Ware that day. To do what? What are we finalizing? We're go they should have their budgets and their warrant articles. Well, the 14th so. is the deadline for petition, so we have a complete warrant. So, so what was the answer? To go over the warrants? Do you want to come up, Naomi, please? <clears throat> so what we were thinking, which I don't care if we move it or not, um, because the public hearing is on the 20th, which is the following Monday, so if you want to move it, then we'd have it all finalized in the writing. What is it first? What is it you want to do? Well, we were going to have a complete warrant. We've already done the budget. So we'd have the warrant articles done. And we'd have your first <coughs> view of a petition, if there are any. So what you need to do, just go through it all, or are you going to discuss it? We, were, we have never done the actual discussion, and it's time for us to do that. So you're going to do that after the, she presented all the warrants? Is that the idea? Correct. So I missed but that. 
we would miss that. Right, but now I have to look at the rest of the committee and ask you guys if you all want to attend that school meeting on Wednesday because it has a lot of questions. It seems to have raised a lot of questions on by everybody in this committee. And I would be remiss if I said to you that you couldn't go. And I think it's important if we have questions and we want to be there and they would be willing to let us ask questions to be able to get some of this I don't taken think care of. No, I'm throwing that out to see what kind of response they may give us eventually on that because that's important and we're at a late hour here um, but if that were options that all could be worked on in order to work together I would entertain changing that meeting but that is up to what this committee feels I would like to see that happen I'd like to attend the school board meeting even though I'm not officially on that subcommittee uh, um, when could we meet with the town then? Chris? So timeline, we're, we have the school board on the 15th. Mm -hmm. We have the start public hearing on the 17th. We don't have anything on the 14th? Or the 16th. On the 16th. I have something somewhere else, but, you know, I... Would the 14th work for you? 16th won't tell you that. Okay, so possibly the 14th? Because Monday or you're with the it depends. Board Do you want to see them yeah, before the public hearing? Them. They may be altered one more time after the public hearing. So you could meet the following week. Okay, would, which would you rather do with the town? Wait till after the public hearing or before the public hearing? Well, we don't weigh in at the public hearing. Correct. So. But it's one but last might, chance to change articles. They might adjust yeah. things, so... We should wait till after, I think. Yeah. If they do any changes, we want to see it in this final form. Yeah, I agree with Dennis. I think that's okay. So we could move the town meeting till after the public hearing. We're agreed with that. Yes, no. Yeah, the twenty second. Everybody on board with that? I lost my calendar. The twenty second is a Wednesday. Yes. 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 I have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving town. More to do, leaving town the 16th, so I'll just <laughs> let you know. <laughs> so if I come back, I'll let you know, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we are Make sure you keep the door open when you've gone. <laughs> I'll leave you my keys. <laughs> so we are changing the meeting next Wednesday so that as many of us that would like to attend can attend the school meeting. What time is the school meeting? 6 p.m. Six is the school board and seven is the public hearing. Yes. Okay, so we could go to the school board and maybe they might consider letting us ask a few questions. <laughs> we'll see how they feel about that. And then we will meet at, what date did we pick? 22nd. The 22nd for the town on the final. 6.30? Yes. Everybody good with 6.30? Mm-hmm. Yep. Chris, what time is the Stark public hearing? Um, 7. 7. In the cafeteria? No, it's on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So we have... Is that at the cafeteria? Where's that? It's in the cafeteria, not in the library? The public hearing? No, that's the Stark, Stark one. one. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it Stark is. Stark that's cafeteria. in... Oh. It, well, it says posted in the post office. They may change it. Okay. It was in the CAF last year, too. Right. For all six people. But so right. we're doing the <laughs> right. 15th is at 6 o'clock for the Ware School Board and their public hearing. The 17th is the <coughs> cafeteria so for their public hearing school mm -hmm. and yeah. Wednesday, Wednesday the 22nd Friday, is here John with Stark. Naomi and anybody else who would like to <coughs> attend the we'll town public hearing staff. And then okay Wednesday is our meeting for the town and the town's budget hearing is the 20th yes. at what time yes. Seven o'clock. in this room yep that's the pub sorry the public hearing okay the and then we hit deliberative sessions bang 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 and then Got we die so we're going to <laughs> we see die. a lot of each other in the next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Right after delivery session, you have to put together your mailers like right away because delivery session is the eighth. Okay. It has to get to the printer by the next week. Okay. When do you need that? By the next week. Well, like date. Like yeah, like like one week from the public hearing, you need our mailer blurbs. 
It would be after deliberative. Right. So it's after deliberative. You guys get together and do your blurbs for your handout. We usually write the blurbs so that we can give them at deliberative, and then if there are any amendments made, we have to re-word and re-vote. So when is deliberative? The eight February 8th, 9 o'clock. 9 to 5 on Saturday. Hopefully it won't be the full 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. It's February 8th. I need Bring a lunch, Tom. <laughs> <time February. laughs> it used to Definitely be for lunch. Time. So does yeah. that mean we would like to meet the week of the 28th to start putting together blurbs for deliberative? Uh, 27th, 28th. We don't do anything on Monday because it's oh, always the, okay. the Board of Selectmen's meeting. Okay. So I would think that Wednesday generally we'll see the 29th. Okay. For blurbs. For blurbs. Okay. It's going to be more than blurbs. I think we are going to have to have some conversations that night too because there's a lot of stuff up in the air right now. Well, I suspect. We converse and blurb together. Are we going to vote? Yeah, because yeah, we, we have to vote, vote that night. Then yeah. We're going to vote. And, what did you say, the 29th? 20. <laughs> but remember, we have the meeting with the town on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. So if we have things that we want to start gnashing out with the town or the schools, then we can start and we can finish it on blurb night or we can all wrestle it out on blurb night, whatever goes with this group. 29th. February 29th at, at again 6.30? Yes, everything's moved to 6.30. It seems to be, if, if it didn't, we would be... January 29th. January, January. I'm sorry, January. yes, January 29th. I thought it February, and I thought I misheard. Oh, yeah, thank you. I had that written wrong here, too. Go ahead, Tom. No, I just would like to kind of reiterate something that Lori <laughs> said earlier, and that is town, schools, and everything, we should really have to move this process back a month or so, mm -hmm. so that... January doesn't always look like this. <laughs> I mean, insane. the decisions are going to be better if they're timely decisions, not if they're made in a Major. crunch time. We've got uh, this group and the Board of Selectmen and everybody, you know, you're going to have to all finalize your budgets within a, a, a two-week <laughs> period in order to make your deliberative sessions. It's just, you know, in the future, it just would be better, and you know I've preached this before, that we should just start by December Early, 31st. Yeah. yeah. But I have a, we have a statutory obligation, though. We have to wait. And that's the municipal calendar for SB2 town. So I have to wait till the 14th to make for, my final Right. Draft. But, but yeah. going but you forward, could, you're right. It's not like okay. SIP, uh, CIP starts uh, in August. Yeah, well, we got that stuff in October, so it was... Uh, I think the whole process could be backed up uh, at least a month. And so, granted, you you have your public hearing deadlines and so forth, but there's no reason we can't all be ready for it sooner. Right. Cause and I'm not a, I'm not saying coming. this to complain. I'm just trying to say it to ease the load at the end on everybody. Well, you're going to be taking care of it next year, so yes, it uh, is we'll going to. Well, I understand what you're saying, but you guys saw CIP in October, and November. All I'm going to do is craft the article. It's not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to let you read the article. You've already seen the presentation by Jack that night. So right. we did bring that to you in October. Our budget was done in December. I'm just kind of... Yeah, I'm not hey, this is I'm not, not coming at you, oh. Naomi. This is Trust coming me, I'm directly. Big girl, I <laughs> no offense <laughs> On my first to the day schools out. that we need a better time frame I mean, with the, the schools. Pu town public hearing. Say that again. I was talking to these two. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a, see, here we go I'm again. sorry, my bad. Bad yes, Neil, bad Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. What I, I don't disagree that this is a crunch time, but I just need the Ware Finance Committee to understand that SAU 24 has four separate districts. We deal with eight separate budgets. We already start in September. I do not see how we can possibly move this any further. I mean, I understand this crunch time, and I, and I feel for all of you, but I am not sure, having lived this for the last 10 years, how we can move this back any further. You I, used to be earlier. Yeah. We, our, our deliberative session was, was no, all... No, 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 the process used to... You, you used to be further... You used to 
<laughs> You'd be doing this sooner. sooner. You, you, over the last six years, I've been doing this. You've been slowly getting later and later into January. Just saying, you used to be able to get together. But our before. default budget was not presented to the board until the December meetings. The December meeting in where was on the seventeenth. So right, I. But I'm not picking on anybody, but the fact of the matter, just like we start our meetings in August because we know we have to start listening to CIP and we got to get it together. The Board of Selectmen know that they've gotten certain drivers. I understand that you have eight. Eight budgets. But the Ware School Board does not. And the Stark School Board does not. They only have their school boards. So while you're doing things, they can start getting the process together and start working towards it so that when you do have maybe a, well now i guess it's jackie um when one of you has a little bit of time to breathe we don't want to give you too much because you'd get comfortable oh, do, you don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> that we could just get you a little quicker while you're in the middle of and we've got you with some air and off we go because it's otherwise we see the frustration and you know we're frustrated the fact of the matter is the taxpayers are frustrated because they're not getting everything they need I mean people in the audience are going oh here we go again and it's not a good process and while we hear everything you're saying we're trying very hard to work with all of you to to make a good process and tonight we came out very well but there's a lot of things that are very frustrating and when you try to bring something and get something done and we're going <coughs> because we don't have what we need and I hear what you're saying there's got to be a way to tweak it so can I ask you a question it, would you be open and obviously this is for for Jackie to to orchestrate to having a meeting without the default budget because the default budget is always done at their December meetings so you would not know what the default budget would be if we met with you earlier because and again the way the calendar fell this year the third Tuesday of the month happened to be the 17th which was one week before the holiday so I won't be here this is my last year I get a year off and find something else to help the town <laughs> but the fact of the matter is everybody on this committee and I feel confident that whoever else gets appointed to this committee will have the acumen to make good judgments and understand and research and ask appropriate questions they I believe that they are all quite capable of handling that and if they have a question as long as questions are allowed to be addressed in a, a more comfortable accessible manner I think we could get a lot more done faster they certainly will be able to get it that and you'll have more time to say okay they, they look kind of not thrilled about this and get a little more feedback so that when we are at this point it's not where we are tonight going now we need to go back and get this they want a list of that and then we're going to come back present this and they're going to go well that's better but some of them are still cranky and yes they are quite capable and I think that's a better way to go they, granted I won't be on the board I'm sure they can have this discussion next year but I think they can I, I just that. I just want yeah. the board to understand that given with four budgets we the default budget and we have three SB2 districts as well um, those happen in December so there's no way to meet with this board prior to giving the default budget to the school board yeah and I just want to support what Lorraine said though is because it's it's easy to say they have a school board in where to do that right I have a selectman in where to do that but the board has other jobs and your support staff is the, really the ones that do it all to put it together so she does have eight you know a lot different um, and the board supports it usually but it's usually the office people that pull it all together and so we, it's tough right and we're very cognizant of that make right no mistake. but I know it was like well it's easy to where has the board no but it's not just that easy right but we're also dealing with to match all that you got 13 people and everybody's got schedules everybody's got lives yep. kids homes of course oh you don't have anything you just I don't have a life <laughs> no, and, 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 so, but we yes. hear you it's yeah. just I don't think it's possible we'll try yeah and, and so, I think she said we try and but I just don't try. think it's so that if everybody easy. puts a little more try in their life and maybe we can get this 
through a little more smoothly going forward for Tom. Well, <laughs> Jackie, to next year James will call you. It's, uh, we'll get it squared away. It's all good. <laughs> Yeah, yes. I think. Got that, James? Um, <laughs> what, what we try to do as a group is to put together a whole bunch of puzzle pieces and try to see a picture. And even in, in, in reference, we never answered the question about the default budget, but I do believe, and I'm not speaking for everybody because we haven't voted, but if we could just get the proposed budgets, we would at least know what pieces of the school puzzle fit together with the town puzzle mm -hmm. because I'm a slow comprehender and when I put all of this stuff together in one week it's going to be insane. It's a but, lot of information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know if people want to throw us pieces of it um, we can track what we have and what we still need and it would, it's, it would make the process a little bit more digestible. Yep. And again, as this committee tries very, very hard to be very transparent. And each one of us goes to different things. And as long as the people that are going to things as your chair, I have never looked at somebody and said, did you go talk to the police department? Are you talking to the fire department? I trust you that if there is pertinent information and you're raising a question about a particular budget, there's got to be a reason. And if you feel that that reason needs to be made public, I trust every one of you to do that when you feel it's necessary. I do not need you to give me a report. If we have any problems on our committee, as we have adjusted this year, we, have, we bring them to the forefront, we address them, and we take a vote on how we're going to handle things. Because we're all grown-ups and we all know how to do this. So. On that note, I think we're doing a good job. I'm very pleased with how the schools are handling things. Thank you to Naomi for being very patient with us and unfortunately being hit with the job of photocopying every time she turns around. <laughs> and I want to thank my committee. You guys mm -hmm. are doing a great job. You're asking a lot of questions and we're doing it with good humor, even though we now have two Neils. And, you know, that's a good thing. So if, does anybody have anything else they wish to address in this meeting tonight? Tom has made the motion to adjourn. I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's go home. Thank you so, very much. Matt, um,